Hello there everybody and welcome back to another live stream of Anecologist Plays where it's myself, Will and Nick the Beast over here. Hello, hello. And of course we are back in Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. We hope you all are having a lovely weekend, a lovely Easter weekend period and well, we are in the mist because we are still in the fog here. I'm hearing something. What am I hearing? Not sure what I'm hearing, but anyway, right. So we are going to be doing a whole bunch of stuff today. Ooh, almost ran into the uh, stag fly ants here. So of course, as with as mentioned before, these little guys are storing nectar somewhere in their hive. I um, can barely access it here. Somewhere here, we can actually access it. So somewhere in there, there are most likely some of these ants that have swollen up. They've got a whole bunch of food stored in their abdomens, in special uh, storage organs. And then from there, whenever there's like a food shortage, they can actually uh, regurgitate that and give feed that to the rest of the colony. So yeah, it's a quite a cool little ant, but you don't want to run through that because then you are going to be attacked by all these soldier ants, which is not, uh, not nice. <laughs> um, so anyway, just to recap on where we are, we are, as you can see, we are in the Yava, right over here. So in the deadly fog that we have here, we can't fly with our, with our Ikran, but we are heading over deeper into the fog, into this area right over there in the map, where we are hopefully going to find out what happened to the Sarintu clan. So the Sarintu moot was over there, like a gathering of well, the Sarintu clan to try and come up with possible solutions to problems and basically just have a nice discussion. And then something happened and well, here we are, uh, 16 to 20 years later, here we are now. So we are just going to run over there. Since we can't fly, we've got to run to uh, get there. Of course, as always, if you've got any questions, do feel free to pop it down in the chat below and we will uh, be happy to answer as best we can. We had quite a nice day. We had a, a yeah, very, very nice, a very exercising day uh, where we were, went for a hike, nice little eight kilometer hike. So a five mile hike. That was quite nice. Saw quite a few cool birds and uh, photographed one as well, an arena trogon, which is one of the forest specialists. And it's actually quite rare to see. Uh, very we rare. Managed to saw, yeah. We saw three. Or, we, or we, yeah, we, we saw, saw three. three. Yeah, so that was very, very cool. Uh, so Sitting females, out in the open. Yeah, out in the open. And usually they're skulking. The males have got this bright red chest and the green back. Females also have the green back and then they have a little bit more subdued reddish colors on the belly. And whenever they spot you, they just turn their backs to you. So you don't see them against the forest green leaves and stuff. And so difficult to spot them, but we got to see them out in the open. That was really, really cool. Uh, have you seen these little coronet snails, dear? I have not. I'm grabbing some sulfur pods, yeah? Okay, I see As you are up in the tree. Nick is being very arboreal over there. So she's up in the trees. I am terrestrial being, you know, with a fear of heights. I will stick to the branches that are over here. So we actually have three coronet snails, it seems, here. Yeah. Uh, one over there one over here and another one right at the top and they are slowly but surely making their way along this branch over here i'm not sure whether i actually have it no i don't have it in the hunter's guide yet but now we'll have it so i know previously in oh it just retracts into its shell over here so you can see that they do actually retract into their shell if they are feeling threatened that's quite cool uh, but we have seen them in our normal videos but it's first time we're actually seeing them in the live stream and there we go, the little head with the mouth and then the eyes coming out in our little uh, screen here in the Hunter's Guide. And whoops, it retracts back into its shell. So like the, as it is there, it is of course quite well protected. Most of the body is inside the shell. And then whenever they are sensing that there's no more danger, they actually just bring out the head and then they can sail around on just, the branches. Just tell me when you're moving, okay? Because I'm just up and about in the trees here. Okay. Oh, well, I'm ready to move whenever you are ready, dear. So if you have enough sulfur pods, then we can move. Otherwise, you are welcome to jump up and down in the trees there. I will stick to the to the forest floor. Thank you very much. As we're just grabbing branches to make more arrows with which we will destroy the RDA. Get rid of all those little evil bastards. <laughs> How many right. can we carry? Do you know? 30. It used to be 20. I think with the last update, they actually upped it to 30 that we can carry. Okay, I've got 24 now. Which is marvelous. Which is quite an, a lot. Um, I think I am... Yeah, I think I'm up. also on like, how many have I got? Uh, I have 25. Right. That is quite cool. Yeah, I think I've got, I've pretty much got everything I possibly need. All the arrows for now that I need. So this is probably our second last episode, you said, eh? Could be. Could be the second last stream, which is 
it's quite sad to think about it. Um, but for me, it's also very sad to think about the, the episodes that I've been doing, because I'm on episode 26 now. I think the episode that came out on Friday was actually episode 26. And that means, oh, oh that was 25, and I actually just recorded 26 yesterday morning. But we are very, very, very close to the end there as well. And with almost a quarter of a hundred, well, basically a quarter of a hundred already done, that's actually quite a lot of episodes that I've done. And I've grown uh, quite accustomed to my character, <laughs> quite enjoyed it. But now at some point, of course, we'll have to say goodbye to him for now, until, of course, the DLCs come out. And I will definitely be doing that then and continuing with our story here on Pandora. So I think the first DLC is coming out in two or three months, hopefully, if it isn't delayed. But we'll see then. I <laughs> see Agiliki says that uh, if only the RDA know what's coming. Oh yeah, even if they knew what was coming, they don't know what's coming because Nick the Beast and Will the Ecologist are here to get rid of all the RDA. I see you are just for- oh there you go, you're on the ground, I thought you were still up in the tree. We only realized now- No, as you we ran running, away from me. Sorry? Or you ran away, so I had, I had ah, to run. Okay, but we only realized now, just before you, you started the stream, that uh, if, if Nick, if you can just run to your left hand side there, the small things in life, as she runs, you can actually see the fog twirling around her. I only realized that now, as we were running around. That's quite cool. Okay, 1.1 kilometers left to run, though, dear. And we are just heading over to that side, yeah. Let's see. And hello there, President, and hello, Agiliki. Sorry, hello, I forgot everyone. to say hello. <laughs> Glad you guys could make it to the stream, and lovely to have you all. And welcome to everybody else who hasn't uh, chatted in the stream yet. Hello to everyone. Hope you really are. You all are having a marvelous, marvelous weekend. Uh, see, President says, is it common for animals to make honey like substance uh, like bees do? It does depend. If you think about it, at certain times in the year, there are going to be more flowers that are producing pollen and nectar. So there's a super abundance of food, and then other times there's a shortage. And if you're looking at the honeypot ants of Australia, for example, and also the one in Zimbabwe, uh, then what they will do is during the times of plenty, they gather a lot of the resources, and then they will store it. And in the case of the ants, they will store it in the bodies of some of their uh, nest mates, so some of the other ants in the nest, and in the case of bees, of course, they will make honey. And that then will see them through the lean times. But it is due to the fact that you have got this seasonal abundance and seasonal shortage of resources. Some ants, if you're looking even in the Namib Desert, one of the hottest places in the world, and driest places, uh, quite hot and dry over there, it is a desert after all. But in the Namib, there are also ants there. Some of them, I believe, are those type of honeypot ants where they actually store some, ant, uh, some, some nectar in the bodies of the other ants and others which are feeding on seeds actually just gather the seeds. So it does, of course, depend on what you are actually eating. If your livelihood depends on nectar or pollen, well, then you will make some kind of resource to actually store it. But if you are eating seeds, then you will try to store those seeds. If you look, for example, that's the same thing as squirrels will do, gathering acorns, burying it, or agoutis in South America, which will be gathering the Brazil nuts. And then they, like squirrels, because they're also a rodent, like squirrels, they will then, then just store it underground and wait. Uh, when there isn't, if there isn't a lot of Brazil nuts around, or aren't a lot of them around, then they will eat those. So it's a, it's a, it's a way to make sure that when the lean times come, you have got food. And that's quite cool. Um, if you look at South Africa, we even have ant species that will make these big mounds which consist of discarded husks of seeds that they have eaten or collected where the seeds are actually stored underground and then there are these mounds. Now when I say mounds, it's about mm, half a meter, about two feet in height, some of them, where it's just discarded seeds and seed uh, capsules and, you know, those types of things. So if you can make honey, then you make honey. If you can't make honey, then you've got to store the seeds or whatever you are actually eating. So yeah, um, as, as Agaliki says, yeah, it is very, very lifeless here in the Yava. Really, really a horrible, horrible place. But I really, really, really hope that at some point we can actually clear the Yava so that it isn't lifeless forever. Yeah, we can get our home back. Yeah, yeah. We can have our own little Sarin to moot where yeah. Nor and um, what's her name, Rinella and ourselves, we can all gather together 
and Taylan, even Taylan, he can come and join us as well. All of them can join us, and we can just chill by the Sarin Two Moot and have our own little sibling gathering there. <laughs> that would be quite cool. But we are just, I think we have to be, yeah, we've got to be down there. So we're just going to oh, make our way down the cliff face, with hopefully without breaking our legs. Are we just sliding down? I uh, wish I was this we... nimble. Sorry? I wish I was this nimble. Oh, yeah, in real life. Yeah. Yeah, me too, eh? That would have been amazing. Light footed. Very, very light footed. <laughs> yeah, Nick was saying today that I should do more exercise to become light footed. Yeah. Well, this isn't looking very nice. There's some RDA barrels here. Goodness knows what they... Oh, this is probably where the Yava is coming from. Because you can see these pools of Yava gathering here. I mean, this is probably where it came from. Yeah. Wasteful. Very, very wasteful. No. So, there we go. The location and... and what? What is it? It's a sad, desolate place, Nor. Did her people really come here? It's thick with Yavin, nothing grows. I wish I could see. Is there anything from our people? <clears throat> Why did Alma go there? Hmm. Did the coming Tire lie to her? It was so long ago. There might not be anything left to find. Another dead end. I'll have a closer look. Don't despair yet. Alright, so we've got an equipment basket which gave us a blazing short bow. Yay! Look at <laughs> these. Sorry? Look at these markings here. Wait, where are you? You are. Oh, you're up there. Oh, yes. <coughs> a whole story being told on the wall here. It seems a lot of the Navi clans here have some kind of mural representation, except the Aranehe. I don't think they actually had it. Uh, but I think the Kamitiri has it. And I know that the Zeswa in the upper plains, whenever there's an overhang, they paint it. They've got a whole bunch of like murals and stuff on there as well. And it seems the Souring too also told a whole bunch of stories. I mean, they are probably some dire horses over here. There are some Ikran, I think, are these rep are represented here. The whole bunch, of course, I mean, I'm looking at this whole painting from my perspective, but it's difficult to interpret you know, if you are not part of the original painters, because mm. if you paint a whole bunch of little squiggles, you know what you painted, but nobody else can really accurately predict what you, or interpret what you actually painted. So. Whenever we are interpreting rock paintings, for example, we can guess, but that's all it is going to be. It is going to be a guess. Uh, but yeah, this is quite cool. I love these these murals and these rock paintings and so. Okay, but I think somewhere we should find something. Oh, there is something Thank there you, yeah. you are. Yes. We find out what happened to our clan. So a lot of this I skipped in the uh, episode because you know I was keeping it for for this. And so that we can all, you know, kind of look at things together. Okay, another mural. Nice. Let's see here. And a whole bunch of little toys as well. Just going to observe. Oh, no. There are rock paintings and children's toys. It all feels strangely familiar. I must be the Saren to Mozart. Mm-hmm. Touching these things, it's like reaching a hand back in time. Wish I could hmm. be there. Time Nor just wants to really, really you know, be in touch again with his Sauron II heritage. That's quite sad that he can't be here, but he doesn't have the antidote, so there's no way that he would be able to survive the Yava. All right, I think there's something up ahead again. Oh, a nice mask. And, oh, these are the little thingies that, if you remember, the uh, that one lady with the hook hand, wonderful. she showed us this. From the hmm. These little pods. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The clans always gave gifts when we left. Hmm. As kids, we got excited to see what they were. I wish I remembered. But the best bit hmm. is that I found Anufi's vials untouched in baskets. Th these things over here. And that's an important detail there, that they didn't use these uh, things, that these little healing pouches that Anufi gave him, because uh, Mokasa said that you know, Anufi killed the Sarintu with these things that clearly the Sarintu never used. 
But yeah, I do agree, Agaliki, the rock paintings are really are pretty. I love seeing rock paintings, like the Bushman or the sand, bush, uh, the sand paintings in Africa. Really such awesome paintings to see. And uh, I've seen a few in my life and it's always such a treat uh, to, to come across them. Let's see here. Ah, weapons, of course. Spent RDA bullets. So many spent bullets. Mm. Hardly mm -hmm. to they will here. die. Mm. This must be the place Alma mentioned. The sudden two were all here. The perfect ambush. Mm. I think so. And now, it's just remnants of everyone we loved. Not that the Sarin two went down without a fight, hey. You can see a whole bunch of spears, you can see arrows, you can see a whole bunch of weapons obviously had uh, had been used, but um, I don't think they really stood a chance. They never expected the fight to come to them like this. And we are back here at the at the first painting we saw. <clears throat> and then when you are here, dear, it oh. will play. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> okay. My blanket? That scent. It's her. Sapno. <laughs> so now we're getting a little bit of a backstory there of the night the, of the ambush. And this is the song that our sister also sang. <laughs> and there the chaos and the massacre starts. Shame is so sad, eh? Yeah. No. I. Hmm. I remember it all. What do you mean? I was in my mother's arms. Hmm. Her smell is still on the blanket I found. She wrapped me in it as a child. It took me back. We played at the feet of our parents. The last time we were all together. Mm. I've seen it in my dreams. The happiest I've ever been. Yes. Happy. Ahari was mm. there. Mother was smiling, but then she looked scared. She shielded me, and then it went dark. We need to know what happened next. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Alma, how does she fit into all of this? She has questions to answer. Oh, yes. I should tell Anufi that she didn't poison the Sarento. It was the RDA all along. And so that's... The theater helped them. The that's an important detail. Okay, so getting a bit of backstory there. So we were all just kind of chilling by the Sarin to Moot, and then we had the RDA massacring the clan, which is obviously really, really horrible. So what we are now going to do is we are going to go to the Hollows. We first have to run out of this. Actually, we can tell we can fast travel. Mm. Yeah, let's let's fast travel to the Kamitire home base. Yeah, the hollows. We'll just fast travel there. And then Yeah, I think then we'll carry on with the story. Because I would like to get this part of the story done so that we can then move on to a bit more ecology and looking at some animals and 
stuff because we're currently just looking at the story and we need to take out some rda bases because yes. let's be honest that's also a lot of fun <laughs> okay so i assume you're also fast traveling hey dear yeah i'm on my way okay let me just check because there are oh in the upper plains there are still a few for us to do even no in the we haven't got any rda bases left except for the big one. Oh, maybe oh. over there we may still have a few. Oh, we actually have a few bases we can take out in the King Lord Forest. We've got a whole bunch we can take out in the Upper Plains still. And then we've got a whole bunch in the Clouded Forest. Yeah, so we may need to take out a few more. Okay, but I think for now, let's quickly go and see, because we need to go speak with Okul and hear what they have to say. You are back. I Hello, Okul. To the other. So, the experiment worked. Now that is interesting. Yeah, it worked. But what's happening here? Everything is bad. <laughs> Everything is bad. <laughs> circle of ancestors searching, and everyone is asking why. And Mokasa, slow down. <laughs> Who is in the circle of ancestors? A new fee. See, <laughs> a sod into you alive. It awoke something in her. She's an Awa, scouring her memories to find why you are alive. But it's hmm. been days now. Don't worry, I have news. Maybe Mokasa was right. <laughs> she was too fragile. But then I sent you to her, and I... But it seemed like the correct thing. <laughs> Okul cool seems very conflicted. I have proof. <gasps> I found <laughs> files of her potions unopened, and remnants of sky people in their guns. It was the sky people who killed the Sarentu, not Anufi. Such hmm. troubling news. But what consolation for Anufi? Mm -hmm. I am both sad and relieved. Is this you see, very true? conflicted. Yes, I have the vial. Mokasa, he will come back. We must tell Anufi before he stops us. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way Okul speaks. Mm. It's so much fun. Um... Let's see. So oh, she's down here now. Yeah, Anufi is down here. I'm going in. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello there, Anufi. We're back. <laughs> Leave her, all of you. Oh, Mokasa. Can you not see she's exhausted? Anufi, you need to go home. <laughs> Back to the safety of your solitude and meditation. Anufi, please listen to me. You did not kill the Sarentu. <sighs> this one is nothing but lie. It was the Sky People. I wish that were true. But I saw her vials, clutched in their cold hands, their lips blackened. No, I found them unopened. Among the spent bullets used to murder my people. <laughs> and nothing happens. <laughs> How did you know they would not harm you? Our people mm -hmm. have always been healers. I never stopped believing that. Ah, oh, sweet. <laughs> it was you who found the evidence that condemned me, Mokasa. Hmm. Show me. Hanufi, do you really believe this stranger? I am your advisor, and you ask me to... I am not asking. <laughs> I'm telling you. Not asking you. Why did he do that? You'll see now. Hmm. I have seen enough. Mokasa, it was you who gave up the Sarantu. Mm -hmm. It was their children or ours. 
I had no choice. I carried the burden. Unable to connect to Ewa to hide our truth. And now you judge me? You made us doubt our traditions. Our purpose. I saved you. You killed them. Hmm. An entire clan. Our friends. <laughs> Yet we are still alive. Mogasa, you are cast out of Ewa and the circle of ancestors. Mm -hmm. If you disobey, we will know. Hmm. Now leave our clan, cloaked in your shame. Traitor. <laughs> How could you? You have given us a great gift. Restored faith in our traditions. And now, they will live on in you, Oku. <laughs> Today we are full of sorrow, but we push this aside to heal your warriors. I will tell you where they are. Child, <laughs> we know. <laughs> I shall join you there. I see you too, Anufi. <laughs> so. Yeah, quite a lot to unpack there. Hectic, yeah. Yeah, but I think we'll find out a little bit later exactly why he did it. They probably like held him and said, "Give your children and what, what." <laughs> Maybe. But that is—it's such a relief, I think, for Anufi. No, oh. <laughs> Everybody's talking here. Where is Owul? I'm not even sure where he is. But yeah, here we are at uh, or with uh, did you or did you uh, Ubel. <laughs> to, to look after me. I was just looking out for you. <laughs> you seemed so upset the last time we spoke. I see. You helped me with a personal matter of great importance. <laughs> for that I am grateful. Nice to see Uwal appreciates your concern. Did he just thank me? <laughs> I have never seen him thank anyone before. <laughs> so I think Wall was the one that popped up random, popped out randomly when last time we were playing and we actually cleared one of the RDA facilities. He just said thank you for, for clearing it. He'd been trying to get rid of the RDA there for a while. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he is thankful that we have, have helped him. Okay, but here's Okul. So then we'll delve into a whole bunch of stuff. So, so let's just talk to him and wrap this up. You dug us out. Mm -hmm. Now it falls to me to tend our future. Feed it. Make it grow. Flourish. And if yes. we die. And you perhaps? <laughs> now there's a thought. More people will return now that the truth is out. We will be whole again. You could stay here too, if <laughs> you like. Thank you. But I should get back. To your friends, yes. They will be made whole as well. But after? Think about it. You could be at ease here. Mm. And you feel will help your friends when you are ready to leave. Alright, so we're almost at the end of all the talking, all the talking, all the talking. But before we go down now again to talk to Anufi, I think we need to talk to Anufi again. But before we go and do that, uh, so... The whole thing here is that Mokasa, they of course sold out the Sarintu clan, basically informed the RDA where to find the Sarintu, and then the RDA came and wiped us out. Sky people are Hello. scouring our land. Okay, Hunter. Searching for those monstrosities, they ah the ferals. Who killed them. It is a mercy to those creatures, mm -hmm. whether the sky people know it or not. But I have heard there is a hunter, hunting. Not those beasts, but the sky people. <laughs> Why would they stop the sky people from doing this? They last defeated Good question. a group of sky people near Healing Lodge. I would be careful near there if I were you. Okay, so somewhere near Healing Lodge there's a Navi hunting the 
sky people that are hunting the ferals and shooting them. So it's like, okay, why, why do that? <laughs> so Agiliki asks, is Anufi a mind reader? So when you connect your two um, little, uh, oh man, I can't remember what you call the ponytails, but once you connect those, um, ah, now I've, I've forgotten the name, the Kuru. If you if you connect your kuru with someone else, you make a you get a very deep emotional bond. But at the same time, I believe you also share memories with that individual. So you don't have to read minds, but you know, with a kuru, you can access the memory. So imagine we could do that and just like like you know, courts of law, for example, like just have the judge connect to anybody. It's like no, sorry, you're guilty. Boom, there we go. Sentence done. No worries. No lawyers. No nothing like that. <laughs> Which makes life so much simpler i think uh but of course we don't have kuru so yeah we can't have that and i think then one last chat i think dear um wait where are you are you right over here okay um i think i'm just going to quickly donate a few things here to the community basket anything i need to get rid of um let's just see here i just want to actually sort it by rarity there we go and get rid of everything that is like low quality um, I'm just going to donate because we don't need any of this so we're just going to turn oh, that and that is actually yeah we're just going to get rid of everything that is not a special uh, that can't be used as clan contribution that meal will keep though And some of the things we'll also keep just because. Actually, I think I can get rid of a lot of these things. So, of course, we've collected all these things while we're doing our... Well, on our on our travels. Maybe I'll keep these for my Ikran. That it has something to eat. Uh, there we go. Just really want to keep all the exquisite quality things. Oh, the Sarin 2 Ankle Guards actually better than the one I have. Which also gives me increased movement. 10 seconds after a slide oh that's cool so slide and dash is the ability there okay i'm gonna just donate all of these things empty it a little bit and now i'm ready um ankle guards oh there we go 154 instead of 103 wow okay yeah that takes me up 15 level 15 and a half combat strength 15 and a half okay so uh president also says they're a bit sad that it's rare that we hear the navi language really is um it would be lovely to actually Maybe with a DLC, because, I mean, maybe they'll put a little bit more thought into that as well in future. Where you just walking around and you just hear these, the Navi, in the Navi camps. Just speaking a little bit of, you know, Navi, Navi with each other there. That could be quite cool. Uh, but I think the reason we have it here as just English, as a common or universal language, whenever we're speaking to someone, it's just so that we understand it. We are, are used to it. But there, that little snippet there, it actually hits to me, for me at least, it, it's quite, it, hits, it hits quite hard that normally we don't hear Navi. But there, that snippet there was before we had any encounter with the RDA, before we heard English as a language, we were speaking Navi. But now, because that was the norm for us, now after all we've gone through, after the RDA, after TAP, after everything we've gone through, that Navi is actually a, an alien language to us. It's not what we normally speak. We normally speak English running around here. Uh, so it's, to me, it's actually quite interesting that that snippet there, they have in Navi. And it actually hits you know, quite hard for me at least. Okay, we are down below getting to, or speaking to Anufi again, dear. I love the bioluminescence still. I mean, it really is just amazing as they are triggered by movement as you run across it, and it just goes a little bright. And there comes Nick, sliding in. <laughs> Your face is stone. Your heart set. An admirable determination to fix mm. the broken. This is something I must relearn. To take care of my people as you care for mm -hmm. yours. But do not fear for your friends, child. The old ways will renew them. What can I do to help? I will collect my tools, but for you, the hunt beckons. There is a certain creature in these parts, mm -hmm. a mere deer, 
You may put its hide and meat to great use, I am sure, but the fat of this creature is a mm -hmm. gift. Ensure the deer leaves this life with peace in its heart. Mm -hmm. So a clean kill is what we need of the mere deer. So we are going to go hunt a mere deer now. And they are pretty much all over the play all, all over the show and we'll have a look at that. What must in a we moment. do with the fat? Sorry? What must we do with the fat? Uh, we're gonna take it to Anufi to actually give to Alma Where? and then to heal them. Okay. Yeah, so it's for medicinal purposes. Uh, but yeah, as Agiliki says, getting banned from the from AY is the worst thing that can happen to the Navi, indeed. Mm -hmm. And that is why it was such a... Uh, because uh, Anufi, actually, as far as I recall, having had that burden of having killed the Sarin too, um, mistakenly thinking that she has killed the Sarin too, I mean, they've she's had to go through that... Or well, she was banished from Awa. She hasn't been able to connect to Awa. Now suddenly, she has actually come back, and she has been able to connect. So, for years and years and years—I mean, probably at this point for eighteen or twenty years—she's been running around believing that she killed the Sarin too, and sure. that healing it has led. I mean, healing is what this, the Kamitiri are known for. They are a clan of healers, but you no, know, now that has killed the Sarin too, and then now oh, finally she's like, wait a minute. This is not actually what happened. Oh, there's a mere deer right over here. There was a mere deer right over here. Okay, we are in the right habitat. I think I hear. Yeah, I hear RDA. Our first victims. Ha <laughs> Right, then we'll carry on with everything. For now, the RDA beckon. Ah, right up the bed. Yes, here they are. Okay, see, Nick is coming up. We're just going to wait for her. It's always more fun to take out the RDA with her. You ready? Yeah. Okay, I'll go for that grenadier. Hey, you there. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Priya, we are taking out the RDA first, and then we'll get back to you now. There's another one, and we'll just take this one running here. To the trees, and... There seems to still be one. Oh, here, right down here. How do you naughty one? Stop it. <laughs> you want to make the helicopter go boom? Yes. There Boom. we go. Always fun. <laughs> I love clearing the RDA, making sure that they, you know, die. <laughs> Don't like the RDA, we'll get rid of them as much as we can. So it seems this observation platform over here, the one of those floating balloons, has also fallen from the sky, but this was not our doing. It would actually have been cool that if we actually took out those little balloons at the top, they actually fell from the sky, ended up on the ground here, and you have the RDA popping up to try and salvage them, and then you can take them out some more. It would be quite good if that were the case, but it doesn't happen that way. When but we it's take such out pollution, little... eh? Sorry? It's such pollution, this big metal thing that will forever be here. Uh... I know, but, you know, if you look at the RDA bases, they get, they recover quite quickly. If you, if you get rid of those RDA bases, they actually get overgrown very, very rapidly. It seems that here, in um, on Pandora at least, things get or you know, recover very very quickly, and it's likely due to the high rainfall that this area experiences. Because if you are in an area with low rainfall, it would take a very very long time for it to recover. But now with the high rainfall here, rehabilitation and restoration projects actually would be quite quick. Yeah, but the sad thing is that people will forever leave a mark here. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. And uh, even in my game now, where we're almost done with the story, we still have some signs of the RDA, but it is becoming few and far between. If you actually just run, the areas are so overgrown now by forest that it's difficult sometimes to actually know where the RDA facilities actually are. Ah, there's some, there's some trail moss here, exquisite quality. Uh, there we go, pull down. Uh, but the best is, of course, to harvest it during rain. Okay. I think we've got some bone helm rhinos here somewhere. Yeah, there we go down below. Whole bunch of bone helm rhinos. Did you hear That's them? cool. Yeah, I heard them. I love the sound design in this game. Eh? It's so awesome. You can, you can 
here what animals are in the area. Really, really awesome. Okay. Let's see. Um, <laughs> President says, and so it begins with the uh, taking out the RDA. Mm -hmm. Oh, indeed. Indeed. Oh, I think we've got a skill points or a bunch of skill points to actually use, dear. Yeah, oh, I've got I've five. I've got three. Wow. Yeah, I've got five to use. Um, hmm. Hunter or not hunter? No, I think... Hmm, which one's to go for? Which one's to go for? Maybe just get more energy. That's a good one, I think, for me. And in terms of rider... I'm going to go aerial fishing with my Ikra. And then I'm going to just... The maker I already have done... I think that's all I can get here. Dun, 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 dun. Twice as many extra special arrows. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Extra ammo too. Right. I just upgrade it, uh, upgrade it a little bit. In my single play, I'm almost actually fully upgraded. I think I've got one or two skill points that are left, or one or two one or two skills left to do to use. Okay, uh, but yeah, I agree. Agaliki Mokasa definitely deserves the uh, banishment that he got. But, you know, the uh, as the old saying goes, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And he said there that he did it to protect their children. Uh, so he did it for a reason that he thought... He thought it was a valid reason. It wasn't a valid reason. Hello, Flamingo Orchid. We haven't seen your kind in a long, long time. They're not really that common. I mean... The conditions here are right for them, so you can have flamingo orchids, but they do a lot better in the King Lord Forest, so they're actually very, very rare in these parts. Anyway, right. So we now have to do, technically we've got to hunt a mere deer, so I could actually put mere deer up on the hunter's guide here. Uh, mm. Wildlife gatherables, mere deer. You can pin it. And so just the mere deer, I love the fact that a lot of the animals, most of the animals, have got their specific areas that you can find them. And the mere deer here you can find in the white moss forest biome of the clouded forest. Technically that isn't the biome, technically that is a vegetation type. The clouded forest in its entirety is a biome. A biome is a large area with a similar vegetation and structure and functioning like forest and grassland. Those are two biomes. Namak ruins of Africa, for example, one of our desert-like environments, desert, tundra, all those are biomes. But if you're looking at the clouded forest, so if we just go into the clouded forest here, I mean, this is a biome. Throughout this area, the vegetation looks more or less similar. Uh, a lot of fungi driving this ecosystem, whereas the upper plains, of course, that's a grassland ecosystem. Yes, some areas you've got a few more trees, some areas not. Uh, the vegetation will change from one area to another, but the general shape and structure of that biome will remain the same. So we've got a grassland area here, we've got a uh, fog or mist forest here, and then we've got the Kinglor forest, which is a typical rainforest. Very different in terms of structure and functioning than the clouded forest here. So these are definitely two different biomes. But anyway, they're calling it biomes. Um, we're just going to pop over to the mirror here, here, but it's technically a vegetation type. The clouded forest is the biome and the white moss forest is the vegetation type within that larger biome. And then you can find them in herds or the rarer mirror here, you can find in herds within the white moss forest biome or vegetation type. So basically if we go to that area, uh, white moss, that's basically this entire area that we are in from the, from the Kamitire home base over there, all around here, this is all white moss biome. We actually are away from the white moss biome. So let's just actually fast travel to the stone cloud perch just to our right, to the east there. And then we will uh, just give them some trail moss because we need to do that. Um, so they actually want trail moss. And can you believe it? We just happened to get it a moment ago. <laughs> there we go. Let's just give that to them. Et voila! Agiliki says they love the diversity in the biomes. Oh, me too. Mm. I love the diversity of biomes we have, the vegetation types we have, and then the different species we actually have within each biome. Okay, so are you around, dear? I like the music they were playing there. Oh, were they playing music? Sounds like they're like a... drum or something. 
I'm not hearing any music. Are you still hearing it? Yeah, when I look to the left, I do. Okay. I heard a drum a moment ago. Not sure where they are playing. Oh, where where, where are you, bunch of secret musicians? Here they are. We found we them. Can, we can actually hear. So there's that instrument, the bow, with a bow with a dong 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 dong. How oh, did you get up there? Uh, I jumped along the branches on the outside. But we can to some extent actually hear the, the musical instrument here. If everybody would just stop talking, we could actually hear it. <laughs> just chilling with the Kamitiri. Ah, but wait, no, this isn't you. Are you, where are you? Down below? No, I'm up here. Like way up? Yeah. Okay, we're not that high up. Um, wait, where are you? You are... Oh, there you are. I see you. Uh, just drop one down, one level down. Okay. Hey, there you go. Yeah, I hear it now. Yes, it's here yeah. it is. They're playing it right over here. Oh, this is cool. Yes. So I remember, I think, President, you mentioned last time that it's sad that we can't hear them playing it. Oh, there we go. There's one crying here, but... Which is spoiling it a bit, but... but oh, I, I hear the one crying. The one here next to us. <laughs> <coughs> oh, that's it's, really it's nice. emotional. It's an emotional song, I think, that they're doing. And mm. someone is also doing the throat warbling as well. Yeah. That's quite cool. Okay. A little bit of a musical interlude. With some weeping. Yeah, Lovely. with some weeping as well. <laughs> now, we just have to ha keep an eye out. I think there are, there are some mere deer up ahead. Now we can head in that general direction and then we'll just quickly take one down, run over so the shroud doesn't actually cover it. You must remember that the shroud is also around, it is also a thing here. Oh, there is also, it seems, an ex exquisite quality one. Yeah, there is a mature individual as well. Difficult to see which one it is, but I think it is the one that is closest. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, I'm just going to crouch down. <coughs> and then hope that we can get close enough. So of course the idea is that if you really wanted to be stealthy, you would have to crawl flat on your on the on your belly to get close enough to draw your bow and then hopefully get a nice clean kill. Like that. And then you've got to run over before the shroud gets to it and I made it. Yay! Okay. Ah. Thank you for these gifts. Nice. Yeah, so you would have to technically make use of like rocks and stuff to sneak up to it. I remember years ago, this was in 2010, I snuck up to an owl, a spotted owl, a spotted eagle owl, not not to hunt it obviously, to have a good look at it because I wanted to take a, take oh, a yeah, photograph of it. Oh yeah, come some baddies. Oh, is um, it? Animals. Which ones have we got that's coming uh, towards chameleon us? Chameleon oh. crawler. Oh, it's the chameleon crawler. You see, now it's gone. I actually want to see whether they try to hypnotize us with their little tentacles, because technically they should. Uh, the hunter's guy does say that they will hypnotize their prey with the little flashing, with their, uh, by flashing their tentacles. Go on. No, no, they are the, uh, just attacking. And just launching at us. Wow, takes out half my health. That is impressive. Oh, there is an exquisite one right here. Oh, shit. Okay. Sorry, one. That, that was quite sad. That was not the best shot, I'm afraid. But brilliant, brilliant colors. Ah! Hi, Bowena. Oh, no. Just, just go. No, they're still attacking me. No. Ah! You can harvest that one. <laughs> Okay, so the chameleon crawlers, I really do love them. Sheesh, I like, I think they are one of my favorite animals in this game. Especially the fact that they are so well camouflaged when they don't want to be seen. I mean, you'll be walking around, you don't know they are right over here, and then they just plop into existence. But brilliant colors with the adults there, uh, a little bit more vivid. 
I really would have loved if they actually had in the game that you can... They will spray, spray their tentacles apart and then hypnotize you because cuttlefish, certain cuttlefish will actually do that. They will do that to hypnotize crabs that they are preying on, where they actually extend their tentacles and then they have this rhythmic pattern that they actually flash all along their, their tentacles and that seems to hypnotize the, or, you know, entrance the crabs that they are preying on. Such a cool skill to have. It is, eh? and the best is they are colorblind. They are unable to actually see color, but they're able to blend perfectly with their background. Which is really very, 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 very interesting. In like pigments of grey for them. Yeah, I think they just kind of match it perfectly. Um, so yeah, I think we have a lot to go take out in the upper plains. Or, uh, facilities. Also, there's also in the clouded forest here, maybe we should go there. Uh, Mossy Nook is... Oh, it's an abandoned camp. Okay, we can't go there. Um, you see, you'll see where, I, where I'm fast traveling to now. There's one that we have taken out, and then there's also an RDA facility. Okay, so I see Agiliki asks, what's, my fav what's our favorite animals or creatures in the clouded forest? Um, clouded forest, definitely the uh, chameleon crawlers, followed by the echo crawlers, or uh, echo stalkers. Really love those guys as well. What did you say are your favorites in the uh, in the clouded forest here? I'm not sure. <laughs> Probably those deer looking things. The little woodpecker deer, the mere yeah. deer. Yeah. They are very cool. Indeed they are. So yeah, so many different creatures of course that we can potentially look at. But if you listen carefully, you can hear a cuckoo calling as well. Yeah. Not at the moment, it was calling a moment okay. ago, but that is the common cuckoo uh, that you have in Europe. That's the one, the typical cuckoo clock. Cuckoo, cuckoo. It's some skill, yeah. Yep, there's a bell sprig here and there should be another one as well. Oh, yeah. So when we initially cleared this area, of course, they weren't, uh, they weren't here immediately afterwards, but after a while, if you, look, if you come back here, then the bell sprigs have appeared. Usually two bell sprigs per little uh, facility that you take out. And there's another one to this side. Oh, there's an ant's nest here as well. No nectar in it. They having a few lean times here, or having some lean time. Awesome to think that you know until we came to this facility, it was an eyesore. So, yes. are we going to do like a vote to see what, what we're going to play instead of um, this? Like either Green Hell or Small Land? Maybe. Maybe we should do a poll. Maybe we should. Because, I mean, if we finish this, uh, it's quite possible that we are going to finish this next week. Uh, then we have to wait for the DLC to actually drop before we can play this again. And uh, I hear... Oh, there's a helicopter coming in. Oh, he is just dropping off some uh, guys over there. Okay. Oh, yeah, but, in this facility. Yeah, yeah, in the facility. I think there just may be kill. like a quest in here. We shall go kill them, yes? I guess, yeah. We have to. But I think we should then make a little vote on what we should play. Because we're going to have to wait. I like... Uh, you know, one week Pal World, one week something else. But that yeah. something else will be will be a question. So yeah. Okay. Let's see, we've got is that there's a soldier. There are two soldiers and two mech suits. Two amp suits. Okay, can't jump up there. So overgrown, what did they even do here? They're probably looking for someone or something, eh? Or probably here to exploit some more resources. Oh, there's vine fiber here. Interesting. I don't think I've ever seen vine fiber easily like this. Just popping down. Okay. Oh, it's just normal, normal quality. Okay. Anyway, I think we've got to head up here. Find the flamingo orchid. Oh. Hello there. Are they Goodbye. aware of us? 
just snipe through there, and there is a grenadier. That obviously will be throwing grenades, mind the grenades. And that's what you get. There we go. Okay, there should be one soldier left. Uh, there. Somewhere. Uh, right in front here. There we go. Yeah, shoot him with a shocky arrow, dear. Shoot him with a shocky arrow. There's no time to change over. <laughs> no. Just get rid of them. Yeah. There we go. Well, that was fun. Okay. But I think if we then finish uh, Avatar next week, <gasps> oh, or no, not next week, in two weeks' time, we are going to put a poll up on the YouTube channel as well on what we should be playing next. Because, yeah, we've been talking about it. Green Hell could be a lot of fun. Because last time I played Green Hell on the channel was before I even hit 100 subscribers. So those videos yeah. didn't do too well. And also, There's always stuff happening in Green Hell and it's very scary. Yes, and it is a lot of fun to play that with you. I would never play that alone. Yeah. <laughs> it's not yeah, it's not a friendly game. like. No, it isn't. Hello there, Ozymandias. Glad hey. you're also here. Glad you could make the stream. Hey, Ozymandias. Been nice a while. To, nice to have you with us. And uh, there are some me more mirror deer up ahead. Normal one. Young one. Looks like a young one. Yeah, there we go. It is a young one. They are more turquoise in color, whereas the adults then go darker blue and almost a little bit of purple in there as well. Weird that they are actually... You would think that the young ones would want to be a little bit more camouflage, but that turquoise there actually stands out against the background. The more adult colors actually are a little bit more camouflaged. Anyway, we are heading straight in this direction because you can as you can see here it is polluted and we are going to go take out the facility that is responsible for this pollution but yeah so we've been thinking about green hell perhaps mm. otherwise we were also thinking small land we small say land there. yeah small land which is well, like i don't know grounded. if we were thinking about anything else really i think those are the main things we were thinking about but we can uh, you know have a look there what we have that is multiplayer that both of us have and will be able to play. Okay, so there are quite a few RDA over here. Oh, I'm I want to take out this big suit here. Right in front here. Yeah. Okay, I'll take the one on the other side then. Okay, you ready, dear? Yes. Three, two, one. Let them roll. <laughs> right, and let the fun begin. Just sniping with my heavy bow. There you go, there are two more there. Feels like I'm not shooting very far. You've got to remember you've got to hold in, eh? I do. Have you got your heavy bow or have you got your heavy long bow, bow? Yeah. I think that was it. Hmm. Well that was it. Yeah. <laughs> that went that went off without a hitch. Okay, uh we need to First, get rid of the toxins. So I'll pull if you want to go sabotage, dear. Where do I sab sabotage? They were smoking at the moment, or green gas at the moment. Okay. The sabotage first. Yeah, you, you can sabotage. I'm just going to sabotage this one. There we go. That was easy. Super. Hey, voila! Always nice to do a bit of eco terrorism. Almost said eco tourism. That's also quite nice to do. <laughs> in real life, eco tourism. In the game world here, eco terrorism. <laughs> Always fun. Uh, and there we go. Some adult mere deer with a brightly coloured tails there. Hello there, it's Arun. Glad hey, you're also Arun. in the stream. Glad you could make it. Uh, let's see, so we've actually cleared this area now nicely. That's great stuff. Um, there is a Navi camp over here that we can also just go and pop into, just so that we have it as a little fast travel point. Only about 382 meters. That's quite quick to get to. Agaliki is asking if we're not going to fly. <laughs> he wants to fly. We are so used to actually just... We can probably fly. We're just so used to not flying with the fact that Nick couldn't fly, and now she can fly. I don't know, they're also deciding to just land way over it's, here. It's Arun's asking what, what, yeah, are, so the what games? are the games? The games we've been thinking of are Small Land, Survive the Wilds. I did, I think we did... We did a video or two. Like, like yeah, two or three videos. We started with that like 
way back. Uh, so there was that, and there's also Green Hell that I mean I played when I just started the channel. I did play that one, um, but as I said, that was before I even had 100 subscribers. So if the videos even got to like 10 views, it was amazing because usually I had like one or two views. But you could hear the you can hear the common cuckoo calling, a cuckoo. There we go. Is this where we need to be? No, no, no. This is just to pop into. To get it. The fast travel point. I also want to find out what they want from us. Okay. I love hearing that cuckoo sound there, the, the common cuckoo. We don't hear them in South Africa. We do have the common cuckoo in South Africa. It's a summer migrant, but we they don't call here. They only call in Europe. Very, 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 very rarely will they call here in South Africa. While they are here, they're actually silent. I'm somewhat quickly cooking food here. Yeah. Okay, I'm just trying to find the uh, donation basket. They've hidden it. They don't want any donations from us. It's probably down here somewhere. Yeah, there we go. There it is. Okay. Uh, they want Crimson Tree Resin. I don't think I have that for them. No. No, I do not. Do you think I have? I don't know. Maybe, but I'll I'm not check. sure. I don't think you can donate, but... No, I'll give it to you. Let's see quickly. Yes. Crimson tree raisin. Okay. Oh wow, okay. Mm-hmm. Have you got does not look familiar now. Okay, no worries. No worries. We'll we'll get them. doesn't really matter too much whether we can give it to them now or not. I love these fungi growing over here as well. Uh, these resemble false turkey tail that we have here. Uh, well, we've got it here in George as well. Here we are. We have it, uh, but I don't think false turkey tail actually has gills. This seems to be more of a characteristic of a whole bunch of other fungi, not false turkey tail or turkey tail for that matter. I don't think they actually have gills. Anyway, uh, so uh, Eats Arun also says Empire or Empire of Ants does look nice. Yeah, that also looks like a game that is going to be quite fun. Maybe if that comes out in time, uh, you're on time for us, then we'll be able to play that one. We'll be able to get that and play that. Empire of Ants, is it a multiplayer game? It's, I think it's a multiplayer game. Is it raining, dear? It's raining. Oh wow, it's raining quite hard. The thunderstorm has begun. We had like Lovely. big raindrops falling earlier. For and a second. Now it is really, really, really growing quite, or, or raining quite nicely. So that is quite cool. Um, so this ant game, what is this all about? Um, Empire of Ants, I think it was uh, revealed the other day, uh, recently, but I'm not sure whether it will actually um, release on time for us to actually uh, uh, play it when we finish playing uh, Avatar. You must show it to me though. I will. Maybe I in the future we will play it. I think I may have shown the release trailer to you. Hmm. But it may, I may have forgotten to actually show or it I to you. Or I've forgotten. I don't think you have, so we'll see. <laughs> oh, it's really it, the downpour has has begun out here. It's like really pouring at the moment, and we were walking this morning, and mm -hmm. it was sunny. Swimming the waterfall. Yeah, it was but there's already the a down here. Where are you down there somewhere? There's some RDA here. Oh, is it? Oh, uh, there's also budding watcher. Just checking where Nick is, and we can just dive down here. Just to get rid of the RDA. Oh, I see. There are two, three. Oh, there are a bunch. Whole bunch of victims. Beware, we the ecologists and the beast is coming in. Hello, yes, I make your things go kaboom. Oh, okay. Boom. Okay, I think everyone's dead, is it? Yeah, it's I already clear. So. Yay! <laughs> love it. Oh, man, I absolutely love it. But yeah, anyway, uh, so Itarun, we will... Okay, so Itarun says it's releasing later this year. Oh. Definitely something to keep in mind. Like, imagine it's like grounded, but you can play from the ants' perspective. Oh, wow. <laughs> that will be quite cool. I love ants. Uh, most Me too. ants. There are, uh, uh, there are some ants that I don't like, like the Argentine ant. That one is very, very invasive. Oh, there are two helis up here. Not for long. But the Argentine ant, it's really invasive here in South Africa, uh, pretty much all over the world. 
really a big problem. Uh, the red imported fire ants, of course, Rifas, they are horrible in America, and I see that they have now also been found in Europe. Uh, to be precise, in Syracuse, uh, the where is Syracuse? There, it's in the Mediterranean. It has now appeared, and that is bad news because if they get a foothold in Europe, then Europe will face the same problem that America has been facing with the Rifas. It's extremely difficult to get rid of, and they will displace a lot of indigenous species. So I don't like Rifas. Don't like them in grounded. I don't like them in real life. Uh, but a lot of other ants I really, really adore. Like, we've got ones here in South Africa we call cocktail ants. And they are such cool little ants. They're called cocktail ants because when they're running around, they raise their abdomen like a rooster's tail, like a cocktail. And uh, I, hear, I hear helicopters. Oh, there they are. By the balloon. I assume we're taking them out, dear? Oh, for sure. Yes, for sure, for sure. Okay, you're going for left or right? I'm a little bit further away, so you can shoot, I'll take the one that's left. Okay. Uh, I missed that one, but I'll take this one out, there we go. I'll just taunt this one and wait for him to throw fire rockets at me and miss. Almost hit there. Hello. You want to take him out? He's like retreating. No, there's no retreat here. <laughs> I'm just taunting him. Oh. I no, I'm, I'm, I'm taunting him. There we go. Just getting you to shoot him. May as well destroy this balloon as well while we are here. Yeah. There we go. Okay. I will just come and land. Oh, oh, okay. When my mouse stops being weird, I will come and land. And we'll just quickly scan this. There we go. Okay. Let's see here. Um... Agrika says, and the RDA is getting there, but uh, they're getting their butts kicked <laughs> and their faces exploded. Yes, repeatedly. Uh, you ready to shoot, hey dear? Yeah. Okay. And then, as we fly off into the sunset, someone is telling us that it is raining. She wasn't actually in the rain, though. She is dry. Hello, everybody. Say hello to everybody, Cinnamon. Meow. 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 Hello. Oh, little sweetie. She's actually surprisingly calm this evening. I think it's because she gets to watch TV over here and is getting to watch my cell phone as well. She's like, what on earth is happening here? It's like, two screens? I'm spoiled for choice. <laughs> okay. I did bring her food bowl because I knew she was going to come and complain and ask for food. Come on. I think I had thunder. In, in real life. Yeah. yeah, it it definitely tasted like thunder earlier, so I knew it was probably going to be a thunderstorm today or this evening. I can I can smell the rain. Oh man, that's a lovely scent. Okay, well, Lucia, our little Dutch hunt, is terrified of of thunder, and she is still very very relaxed. The only parts I can see sticking out of the blanket are her two back feet and the tail. That's I don't think I she's terrified there. anymore. She's just scared. A little bit scared yeah, now. Yeah, she is. She's scared. Yeah, she, she knows used you, to be you terrified, are close by. terrified, but now she's just scared. Uh, but uh, whenever it is like really hectic thunderstorm, where it doesn't take long, and then she just comes slinking along, and then she comes and lies by my feet, and then she feels safe. She is always like, whenever she is really scared of the lightning or the thunderbolts, she just comes and hides by my feet, which I adore. I love the fact that she does that. It's so cool. And Cinnamon, everybody says hello to you as well. Three more uh, chocolates coming up here. I heard chocolates. Chocolates, oh wow. Three more chocolates coming up. I'm like, where? <laughs> Three more chocolates. Well, they're going to be dark chocolate. They're going to be extra burnt. And uh, hello there, Repto. Glad you could make it to the stream as well. Always great to have you with us. Oh, this one's a, a higher level than us. Oh. Not anymore. <laughs> what level are you guys? Level 17. <laughs> You're no match for our short bows. Come on. Be realistic. <laughs> There's a facility about 500 meters from us, dear. Oh. Uh, down below. So I've, I've actually marked it on the, on the map. And President also says it's so weird that the clouded forest reminds uh, them of the Central European forest. It looks and it, and it sounds. Yes, I think it really is modeled of uh, European pine forests. 
And then if you look at the grasslands, of course, that's based on prairies and the grasslands of Africa and even Australia. And of course, the Russian steppes, a lot of grasslands all around the world in a certain latitudinal band along the world, uh, in, the, in the world. And then if you look at the King Lord Forest, of course, that is based on based on typical rainforests along the equator. But the the clouded forest, definitely, I also get, and I've, I've never been. I mean, you've got, you've been to the Schwarzwald, haven't you been there? Yeah, the, the, black, the black Yes, I've been there. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, does this also remind you of that type of scenery? Yeah, the, the it, does, it does. Like, I've never been there, but this reminds me of, of like, European pine forests as well. Mainly because, well, the only thing I've ever experienced of the Schwarzwald is the um, in no Need for Speed Porsche 2000, the Porsche 2000, there was this one map, Schwarzwald, and you had to drive through the to the uh, Black Forest. That was a lot of fun. Oh well, there are quite a lot of victims over here. Future body bags. <laughs> ah, installation Charlie. All right. Are they relatively low level? That shouldn't be too challenging. Yeah, okay. I, see, I just see Nick sneaking up. Are you ready? Can I shoot the first guy yeah? You can, yeah. I'm going to shoot the guy directly behind him. Oh, that didn't work. But... Yeah, now he's dead. Okay, here comes everybody. There goes a person. There goes another person. They oh, didn't go anybody. Oh, there we go. Wonderful there. Oh, I missed that one, but you got him, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I missed that one. I was leading a little bit too much. Okay, fine. Take that. Take an arrow to the face. There we go. Uh, I think that was everybody. I think right. so. <laughs> they stand no chance. Will and Nick are here. Okay. We don't play. No, we definitely don't play. Shut down the ore grinder and turn off the water pump. Okay, so we have turned off the water pump. And turn off the ore grinder right up here. And soon we'll have a little bit more of the clouded forest back to the way it's supposed to be. Here we go. More for the composting bin, says President. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, marvelous. You want to shoot it here? No, you can shoot it. Okay. I see you're up there somewhere. And there we go. Perfect. Ah, let me just enjoy I my time. I do see more victims. Here. I do see more victims. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Agaliki says, just a wonderful sight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Where's the sausage? Not sure. So we've lost Lucy. Lucia the Dashund is MIA. I think she may be hiding somewhere. Maybe in her little house. Maybe. Um, uh, but Nick said that she has also seen some... Ah, there we go. There, some more victims that, over there. Yeah, on that side. Okay, perfect. We can also just collect whatever we have over here. Let's see what there is. They probably didn't hear the explosions. Yeah, probably didn't. Yeah, probably do not know that there's, you know, a whole bunch of RDA dying. I also heard the uh, Bonehelm Rhino again up there, so they're right over there. But Agiliki, you asked earlier what our favorite animals are in the Clouded Forest, but uh, what are yours? And uh, everybody else, what's your favorite animal that you have encountered thus far? Oh, these guys are... I'm also level 17. I'm level 15. Ah, it's fine. I've got Nick the Beast with me. What's yes. your combat strength? 17. Okay, so they're right on on target for you. A little bit higher level than me, but yeah, it's fine. That is totally fine. Hello, everybody. I'm just going to go start with a boom. Yeah. 
These guys, though, they're normal soldiers, so doesn't matter how much health they have or how dangerous they are, they die with a single arrow. Hee hee hee. That was a good just... one. Sorry? That was an easy one. That was really easy. Yeah, there is something here. I'm just opening up the chest for us. And then you'll be able to loot it as well, dear. Okay, perfect. And... Oh, 10 storm shells. That's nice. I've got a stupid gorilla barrel. Yeah, no, same here. Chest, chest guard mod. Oh. <clears throat> but I think I got from the other ammo I got. Like, uh, the nice storm shells for the shotgun. Okay. Now. What else have we got? There is something purple over there by that waypoint. And maybe it is a bell sprig. Maybe it is a, uh... A Taju sapling is probably just a bell sprig, but you never know. We're just going to quickly go and investigate. And since we can fly, we may as well fly. <laughs> and these 800 meters, that's a little bit too far to run if you can fly. Mm. The Ikran really able to just cover the vast distances so quickly. And I'm looking forward to the first DLC, which will probably expand on the whole uh, fighting on your Ikran and the whole Ikran overall. Uh, I think that's the theme of the first one. What have we got? We've got a... Oh, we've got a Tarju sapling. That's nice. Another skill point. Hmm. Not sure how to get there, though. That is going to be the problem. Because it is... Whoa. There. I think maybe we go up and drop down. Oh, maybe or maybe not. No, maybe not. Uh, maybe it's over here. I don't know. It's difficult to see in the clouded forest. I mean, that is, it is the clouded forest after all. But it's very difficult to actually see where we are supposed to go. And any openings, any cave entrances and stuff like that. Quite difficult to see. Maybe it's down below. I can't see any little blue butterflies that you usually find along the entrances. There's a bit of blue over here, but I think that's just normal blue. No. I don't know. I don't know how to get in there. You also haven't seen the entrance, oh, no, idea. I'm still looking. It's difficult. I think I found it. I think I found it. So you're on that side. Yeah. Now I'm about 200, or 100, yeah, 200 meters away from you. I'll just land here where I think the entrance is, and then you can join me here. While we're waiting, really such a lovely area. So these are again some interesting little, uh, most likely oh. coral-like. Well, in... well, you know, oh, are you in there? I okay, think, yeah. some coral-like fungi, very very hard fungi, but yeah, of course, decomposing. The whole clouded forest really dominated by decomposers, breaking down all the organic matter, and they quite capable of doing that. And remember the blood urchins. Please don't step on them; <laughs> it hurts. Uh, of course, the high. Temperature and high humidity in the clouded forest here really making it a perfect environment for decomposers. So that's why we have so many fungi that are breaking down stuff in the King Lord Forest. And there we go. A Taju sapling once more. We nice. also have spore root over here, but it's just a normal fine quality. I'm just going to ignore it, not going to harvest it. Okay. You know what? Technically, we can also just fast travel from here. There's some baskets here. Oh, there are some baskets. Okay. May as well grab that. I love the fact that we can actually grab our own stuff. We don't have to share everything we find here. Every, everybody gets their own loot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Both President and Agiliki say they don't really have a favorite. They like them all. All <laughs> the animals. Um, let's see. Shall we shall we go to the King Lord Forest again, dear? Or sure. maybe the Upper Plains? We really have a few... Yeah, let's go to the Upper Plains. You'll see where I'm fast traveling to. It's also one of the extractor plants we've taken out. Um, so Agaliki also asks, have you ever hunted the Bonehelm Rhino? Um, I think I have. I think I've actually got in my... Storage, I may have Bonehelm Rhino meat. Yeah, there we go. I do have Bonehelm Rhino lean meat. So, must have hunted him, though I don't recall when. 
But it seems, yep, we even in the game here we have a thunderstorm. <laughs> That's awesome. Now thunderstorms in grassland areas are really, really prevalent. Uh, have you seen where I fast travel to deer? Yes, I'm just loading. Okay, cool. Uh, there are actually three bell sprigs here for us. Awesome. That's really awesome. Uh, but anyway, thunderstorms are really, really prevalent in grasslands. And part, that's partly the reason why you very often have grasslands where you have them. In South Africa, for example, we've got an extremely high, extremely high abundance of lightning strikes within our grassland biome. And you can imagine a lightning strike hitting the ground. Every time it hits the ground, there is a chance that there's going to be a fire starting. And if you have a high fire frequency, you will have you know, trees and stuff dying and grasses dominating the landscape. So the higher the fire frequency, the higher the likelihood that grasses will end up dominating the landscape. And in the upper plains here, I think lightning strikes are actually quite common, which is a small thing. Yeah, speaking of which, there we go. Where was that? That was close. That was very, very uh, right up there. Okay, very, very close. Speaking of which, there we go. Um, so the high abundance of lightning strikes here will result in grasses dominating. And then, of course, grasses burn easily, so you then have lightning strikes striking the ground, the fire starting, and because grasses burn very easily, you have fire spreading very, very easily. So during the, you know, the rainy season, or actually during the dry season, it's more likely that the fire will spread. But yeah, you can have a lot of, a lot of, a lot, oh, I'm running, bumbling over my words here, but you can have a lot of lightning strikes, you can have a lot of fire starting. I mean, there we go, lots and lots and lots of lightning strikes. Now we actually, where we are, we're not really in a lightning prone environment, but occasionally, like this evening, we do have some lightning strikes. And I really, really love it. Like, I grew up in the Karoo, which is like a semi-arid, semi-desert environment here in South Africa. Really an awesome place. I absolutely love it. But it's way too hot and way too dry for me to live permanently. So that I don't like. But we did have some amazing thunderstorms and lightning strikes, like that one, happening there, which I always, always enjoyed. Whenever the lightning struck, I would just open up the window, not the windows, but the curtains and stare at the lightning whenever it was actually, you know, striking. Uh, we actually, I think, need to get... I'm trying to think where we need to get to. Because there is one more bell sprig. Well, we may as well just fly. I think that might actually be easiest. I don't know why we were doing parkour up there, but parkour <laughs> is what we were doing. Okay. There is also something... Oh, before we go... I do want to actually just fly up because we do now have a thunderstorm. I want to fly above the thunderstorm and look at it from above. Because if you don't want to be struck by lightning, you can actually fly above the thunderclouds and then you are first of all safe from the lightning strikes. You can actually look at it from above. And I'm not sure whether I've ever done that. So since we are here now, may as well go and do that since we have got a thunderstorm. I think we still have a thunderstorm going. So now, of course, we are above the th lightning. I think the thunderstorm has just passed. Aww. It's clear sky, yep. Yeah. No, it's just passed. Okay, never mind. Okay, well, this is a long drop, but here we go. Come on. Um, oh. Oh, we get off my control. I was like H again. Okay, never mind. Okay, we're just going to go free falling. And uh, we're just parried. You know, paratrooping in, and hopefully we'll be able to press H before we actually hit the ground. We're just trying to get as close as possible to that bell sprig. Just dropping in. The RGA won't expect a guy like this. Ooh, almost thought the <laughs> Ikran is not going to pop up for us, but here we go. Okay, somewhere over there, there we go, there's a bell sprig. So we just land over here. Oh, okay, fishing. If you want to do fishing, you can do that in this little moat over here. Okay, there we go. Perfect. And marvelous, the last one. And then there is... There's actually a whole bunch of RDA facilities for us to take out. There's a big one. Let's go do the big one, shall we? Yeah. Are yeah. we going to fly there or what? Yeah, we're going to fly to it. It is 1.8 kilometers away, which is a little bit too far to just run now. 
Oh, it would have been sad, you know, if you weren't able to fly anymore. I would not have played. Yeah, you wouldn't have played. We'd just be playing Pal World all the way, eh? No. <laughs> so, a uh, uh, president also asked, doesn't flash flood or aren't fla flash, flash floods common in those environments? Very often, if you are in an arid area, definitely. The flash floods are then very, very common. Like in Oatsom, for example, where I grew up, which is like the ostrich capital of the world, uh, there uh, you'd have like sunny days, sunny days, sunny days, and then a massive amount of rainfall where cars in the street are almost underwater because of all the rainfall com coming in. Which is always amazing to see, and I always thoroughly enjoyed, you know, not, not seeing the cars underwater, but seeing the rivers that you basically, you know, you've, you've got a road that's functioning like a river, in essence, or becoming a river, in essence. Oh, that's always fun to see, just like massive amount of rainfall. Before we actually go do that facility, there is another big helicopter up ahead here that we can also can take out. Can we take these balloons down? We can. We can take out in a moment, but I don't want these RDA guys over here. Oh, and I think I'm going to be attacked by the facility down there. I think they've detected me as well. I don't want these guys dropping their troops. So I would like to take this out as much as possible. There we go. Oh, there we go. Okay. Can we take out that balloon now, dear? Go. Oh. You are there, eh? Oh, uh, I'm going there now. Okay, I see you. Hello. Uh, but interesting with the flash floods, it's there is this... I think the uh, guys are trying to target me again. If you have a low rainfall area, there's a good chance for flash floods. Uh, but rainfall is so rare that erosion, depending on how overgrazed an area is, if it's not overgrazed, erosion actually isn't too much of a problem. But if you have a high rainfall area, you'd think that erosion is a big, big problem because you've got so much rain. But the high rain also supports a lot of vegetation, which intercepts the rain and prevents... Oh, hello. Helicopter. Thank you, dear. Actually, the, the, the vegetation then intercepts the rainfall and you don't have to worry too much about erosion. If you have a moderate amount of rainfall, that's actually the area where, where if you have something like a flash flood coming in, that is then going to lead to a lot of erosion because you have uh, enough rain to actually result in erosion being quite potential, you know, high potential for, for erosion. But if you overgraze it, there's not enough vegetation to actually prevent erosion from happening. You know, just I'm being sidetracked here while we getting waiting for that explosion. Uh, just some areas when you do have flash floods are more prone to, to erosion as well, which is horrible. Okay, I think we've got to actually drop down here. I don't think we'll be able to travel further by Ikran. Because the anti-air guns are going to take us out. Anyway. Uh, but flash floods, quite common if you have got high rainfall and thunderstorms and stuff like that. I quickly want to grab one of these health thingies. Oh yes, double fate pod. Mm. I think I also need one. <laughs> I'm so used to Pal World that I can just oh, no. slide forever. That'll be next week again. Oh, my health pouch is full. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, let me actually just check skill points. Oh, I just have one skill point. It doesn't count. Okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. 600 meters, and then let's take out a massive facility over here. Yay. A nice big one. And then we'll have the air pollution here also just cleared. Oh, just mind the lightning grass. Hmm. Alrighty. There may be some, some cloaked panthers here as well. This is really their habitat. But they may be gone, especially considering that we're heading into a polluted environment now. I don't think they really are common in the polluted area. Predators would tend to stay away from areas that's highly disturbed and highly polluted. Mm -hmm. Oh, we'll do that, Priya. Don't worry. We are going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, there's a turret. Uh, that turret has seen me. I'm gonna kill it. Oh, there's a, there's a guy here as well. This guy has also seen me. Um, okay. Things have gone south, dear. Things have gone south. 
the hand bomb shot. Let's see what these have. We are just fighting here to prevent our, them from actually sounding the alarm. What have we got up there? There's something, someone. Oh, there's a oh, there's a turret right here. Hello. Ah, maybe I should avoid that turret. No way. And that turret. Oh, someone's calling the alarm on that side. Oh, damn. So we're not being sneaky here. We can't stop that person. Oh, I got it. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Like with seconds to spare, or a second to spare, I got him. Nice. Short bow for the win. Okay. Right. Nobody knows we're here. <laughs> <laughs> Things were insult so quickly, but it stabilized. Okay, right. Oh. Right, 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 right. Where do we need to go? I guess let's hit those guys over there first. Just need to double check my arrows. Yeah, I need arrows. May as well make all 15. Okay. Now, I should really just check. Where are the sentry turrets? So I don't do that again. There's one... There is yeah. one up there. If we destroy it, I think it alerts, alerts everybody though. So we just need to stay out of sight of it. So it doesn't uh, know that we are here and start shooting at us. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, Agiliki says, no RDA machinery is a, is a match for the blue team. Yeah, team blue for the win, eh? Let's see here. Uh, this turret in front is just a flak cannon. That's yeah. fine. There is a helicopter here, but I don't think that helicopter will do anything. And I don't think we can blow it up either. We're just getting closer. And this turret I'm just going to disable because I can. I like disabling turrets. Dun 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 dun. And executed. There we go. It is down. Okay, you ready to shoot some sky people, dear? Yes, born ready. Okay. There is another turret up there. Oh, that's a sentry turret. That is what I need to be worried about. Must I not take it out? You can, you can take it out. Okay. They know we are here. They actually heard the booms. And so we're just running in and shooting everyone we get. <laughs> I think that's it. <laughs> they heard the booms, they reacted, but it was not enough. They still died. And they no. still were not able to raise the alarm. Okay. We're just going to go up here because I think what we need to destroy is up there. Grass looks so nice in the upper plains, just want to line it all day. Oh, I agree. It really is lovely. Provided, of course, that, you know, it's not actual grasses. Because I am highly, highly allergic to grass. Well, I say highly, highly. I'm not going to die. But my eyes, yeah, don't like it at all. There we go. Nice bunch of explosions. Always pleasant. Oh, hello. There's a guy walking over there that almost spotted me. Gonna shoot him in the neck. One less guy to worry about. Is that cinnamon? That's Maui. I think it was cinnamon. It's not that time now. Wait, oh, Memphis is also here. It's always the time to meow. Hello, Cinny. There is another turret just up here. I know, it's the sentry. Uh, yeah, it's a rocket of, launcher. Oh, that's, that, that's a rocket launcher. And then there is a flak cannon. That one is fine. Okay. We're going to that yellow tower now, eh? Yes, yes we are. Just want to double check, maybe I can actually... I don't think I'll be able to disable that turret. Oh, that is... There is a sentry turret up there. You want to take out the sentry turret here? It's going to be a little bit difficult. It's going to be difficult. Um, maybe from I'm up here, though. Yeah, from here you will be able to take it out. Yeah. Okay, are you ready? Just wait one moment. Okay, yeah, I'm ready. Okay, and shoot that guy. Anybody else? No. Nobody knew. Nobody noticed the explosions. Mm -hmm. Okay, like, not that I'm complaining and all, but yeah, it's they're not very good at the whole guarding of 
vital equipment. <laughs> Let's see, where are our next victims? Just want to double check, because we're going up there to make it go boom, and then I guess we're heading to that yellow tower, making that go boom. Okay. Cinnamon, there's some food here for you. Cinny. No. Cinnamon is now running away because she's like, no, they don't want to give me food, fine. Okay, we're heading over there. Let's see, there's an amp suit. There are a bunch of, obviously there are a bunch of people. They're all going to just end soon enough. Okay, let's see. Maybe actually the best route is this way around. Climb up and take them from above here. Yeah, I think this is a good spot. A really good spot. Just gonna take that sniper out there. Alrighty. You ready, dear? Oh, where yeah. are you? I'm here. Oh, you are. Okay, perfect. There's a guy here if you want to snipe him when he turns around. It is fight his weak spot. Okay. Okay. Oh, All that. Need, I don't need the weak spot, I guess. Hello. Goodbye. Hello. Goodbye. I think that was everybody. <laughs> oh, it just goes so quickly when you have nice armor and weapons, eh? There is another turret up there. Oh, is it? Uh, two of uh, them. Yeah, I don't think they're looking this way though. I think okay. we're fine. Because I just need to get up here and then we're done. Oh. Actually, easy so that's peasy great. lemon squeeze. Indeed. Indeed. There we go. And voila! <laughs> no alarms raised. Nice. Though they did try. I still can't believe we prevented them. Haha. <laughs> We prevented the alarm being raised. That's just like, wow. That is okay. what we do. Sorry? That's what we do. That's what we do. Indeed, it is what we do. Yes. And of course, now, since we are in the upper plains, we will have the arrow deer appearing over here. Hello, the little arrow deer. Ah, oh, they're really so, such cool little creatures. Hmm. And there we go. All that sneaking around was worth it. It's it's lovely that one can actually get extra loot from sneaking around. Yeah, it's awesome. Although I would also not say that what we were doing is sneaking around. No. <laughs> we were just causing chaos as far as we were going. <laughs> uh, it's more fun though than just sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Yeah, sorry, dear. Here we go. Just getting the RDA rosters, getting special ammunition, getting everything we possibly need. Okay, I think I've raided this whole armory. Let's see here. Uh, President says there's a hill not too far where, uh, not too far from where they live, covered in green moss. I can uh, can certify it is comfy. Oh wow! Now here in South Africa, what we have is a, a plant that is so nice and soft. It's the uh, bushman's bedding, as it is called. It also will keep away mosquitoes and bed bugs and all kinds of bugs. It's a, it's a part of the daisy family. And it's got these soft, biggish, you know, moderately sized leaves, fluffy, white, gray color. And it is just lovely to lie on. And whenever you go hiking or whenever I go hiking, if I see one, I also rub it all over my body to keep the ticks and stuff away. And I can also certify that it helps to keep mosquitoes away. Because when I was doing research on frogs, and there goes uh, Temek there doing the forward moonwalk. Or oh, Fury, sorry, Fury. Um, yeah, so when I was doing research on frogs, you can imagine at night, like all the mosquitoes around your headlamp. I just rubbed that Bushman's bedding all over my face, and the, the mosquitoes never really bothered me at all. Um, so yeah, there goes another big facility. There's a smaller facility, slightly too the south south west about 1.6 kilometers there right. but yeah anyway so if this were an actual grassland i would be screwed and it's actually quite ironic i mean i'm a botanist slash ecologist and 
Like I am, I'm allergic to grasses and grasses are some of the most common plants in the world. But if I get grass pollen or grass seeds in my eye, then the white of the eye, the sclera, actually swells up to the extent that it can hang outside the eye socket. And it looks like someone stabbed me in the eye and it's painful. It is, first of all, itchy, itchy, and then painful, painful. <laughs> like, I can't just say it's painful once because it's very, very painful. So it's like painful, painful. And it, it looks, it looks disturbing. Like, Nick has seen it slightly. She hasn't seen it at its worst. We got one massive fright when it happened the first time, when I was grade 7, so 12 or 13, around that age. And up until that point, never allergic to anything, never allergic to grass. And then we were on the golf course, my dad and I. And then, for some reason, like, like by the 18th uh, hole, my eye was just hanging outside the socket. And he thought maybe it was because I was playing with a frog and rub rubbing my eyes. Turns out, no, it's the, uh, it's the grass seeds and grass pollen that ended up in my eyes. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a neat little party trick if I want to terrorize people. Or if I want to get out of a social obligation, I can always do that. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. It is terrible. Really, really terrible. Why did we park so far away? Because we like running over the green grass. Oh. <laughs> oh, I love these petrified trees as well, eh? Mm. The massive reminders that there used to be a massive forest up here. Okay, let's see. How many future victims do we have? A few. What did my bill say now I can do with some extra arrows? Sorry? He said I can do with some extra arrows. Wonder why. Oh. Huh. Probably because my sticks are done. Are oh, your sticks done? Yeah, but I'm full on arrows now. Okay, there are some sticks over here that you can also get. A whole bunch. There's one here, yeah. another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight you can get. Maybe she saw that. Maybe. Maybe she, you saw the archer stick it and you did that. Hello there, Martarol. Welcome to the stream. Uh, glad you could make it. Uh, we are doing marvelous and hope you are doing well also. It's a lovely, lovely, lovely weekend. And of course, it's lovely if we can get to take out the RDA at the same time. <laughs> Always a lot of fun. Uh, where are you? Are you yeah, right, here. right here? Okay, so let's rain some hell down upon them dear whenever you're ready i'm going in closer a bit okay i'm just taking out the guys that can spot there we go i've taken out the the guys on top okay there we go there's nick just sneaking 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 i got this big guy this grenadier dude okay perfect i'm just sniping all the soldiers And just getting rid There's of as many as we possibly can. There's one guy who's feeling suspicious. <laughs> and that guy's going to go, oh, there's someone shooting at us. And now he's dead. Right, I think that was everybody. Yeah, Wonderful. there's the one mech suit that, you know, nobody's there to pilot it, so it's no danger to us at all. <laughs> That's always nice. And of course, Nick is just destroying everything, making sure that the RGA cannot come back to this facility. Yeah, let's just get rid of it all. Yeah, may as well, eh? Just like, boom. Isn't that fun? It is a lot of fun. I like explosions. Like you can ask them, you know, with all the explosions I've made in the live, oh, in, in the uh, videos I make, it's always fun. It's like, boom, there goes something else as well. Just like, explosions, explosions, explosions. Okay. I'm so rotating something here. You're doing something there. I'm rotating a thing. Okay, that's one valve closed. And there is another valve that we have to close, which is higher up, I think. And that should be right over here. Yes, there we go. That's another one down. And I think, yeah, there we go. Just shoot this and then we should be able to go up. And you can pull the lever, dear. Pull the lever. Pulling. Wrong lever. <laughs> Oh, nice. And again, another one bites the dust. Oh, ha, 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 ha. There we go. But, Martaro, how are you doing? How are you having a lovely weekend as well? It's, ah, uh, it's lovely. I love this time of year. In South Africa, we are heading into autumn now. 
so it's becoming a little bit cooler i like the cooler weather i especially like the rain so i'm very thankful that we've had some rain this evening oh that's lovely what a short lived eh it was but that's typical thunderstorm i mean it rains it pours and then it's like okay it's done now for now maybe a little bit later yeah, memphis wasn't even in the rain i think it's time for memphis to also be uh, on screen come memphis Ooh, ah, there we go. The big boy wants to say hello to everybody. Say hello, Memphis. Yes, hello. Oh, he is such a chilled cat. Oh, he's so cute. Eh? Oh, just finding his grip down below. I'm hoping that you guys can actually see him. I'm going to see in a moment whether you guys can actually see him. Uh, but yeah, he is also just hanging around waiting for dinner. Well, more dinner. He has had first dinner, but he... And he has had second dinner. He wants third dinner. Hello. There we go. Okay, now he's like, Ooh, food, food, glorious food. <laughs> so excited. Uh, it's his favorite pastime. Most of the animals, you know, and, and myself, and I think Nick as well, we love eating. Yeah. Eating is Too lovely. Much. <laughs> uh, so let's see, how is the Cape during the wet, wet season? It is lovely. Um... So we actually, here where we are, we have this bimodal system where it rains mostly in autumn and mostly in spring. We can have rain throughout the year. That's why we also do have forests around here. Um, ooh, there's another big facility we can take down on the hill there, dear. Oh, I see. I'm checking it. I see the smoke. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's lovely. It's uh, going to be cooler and our house is actually quite cold. Even in summer it is quite cool. Uh, but now as we're heading into winter, our house is going to be nice and cold. Which means that uh, we're going to start making a bit of fire to, uh, to stay warm in the house, which is always lovely. Nice atmosphere as well. <sighs> the members, everyone says hello to you as well. Yeah, uh, we had a nice fire last night. And played oh, some yes. Computer with one of our friends. Yes, played some Pal World. Oh, we've got some Cloak Panthers down below. Oh, I love these little guys. Uh, there was recently, I'm not sure whether I told you, dear, but there was recently. There's also a Bellsprig, the... sorry. Oh. With the last update that was done, or with the previous update that was done, the there was something where they fixed, oh. I think, yeah, it's polluted, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so we need to go take out that big facility. With the last update, there was this something to do with cloaked panthers, but they didn't call it cloaked panthers. I think they called it flying, flying cheetah or something along those lines. So they actually had the wrong name, but flying cheetah is a lovely name for cloaked panther because they're fast like cheetahs. And they can fly, you know, because, well, kind of glide more than fly. I think there is a blade horn with a tracker, yes. Hmm. I think I'm going to quickly just help this one. Come on, blade head. Let me help you. We are here to get rid of all the bad things. Come on. Yes, I know you've got an RDA tracker in you. Just let me take it out for you, okay? Okay, there we go. Hello there, Bladehead. Oh, I love these little guys. Such weird faces, but oh, love them. And no more tracking from the RDA. Okay. Now go and run and go forth and multiply. Okay. Let's see, I'm coming to you now, dear. I've got a whole bunch of Memphis hair in my nose and in my mouth and everywhere. I guess that's what you get from... If you, if you hold your cat right up to your face, especially a fluffy boy like Memphis. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Martorell says, Wish I could explore Africa while getting my bio degree in wildlife biology. Trying to find ways of making that happen. Yeah, Africa is just... Oh, it's divine. I don't think I would want to... You know, being in Africa, I don't think I want to be in any other continent. Visiting other continents would be fine, but Africa, this is just something magical. With Africa. Hey, Memphis. Okay, so we're taking out another big facility. Oh, they're quite low level, so this should should be quite easy. I say that, but then they if they raise the alarm, we lose out on all the good loot. Flak Cannon Veteran is down there. Yeah, Flak Cannon, that's alright. That's anti-aircraft, so in anti ikran So anti-air, we should be fine with that. It's just the sentry turrets and the flamethrower turrets that we have to worry about. Okay, the first thing we need to get rid of is right over here. 
And there are a few soldiers and one amp suit that I can see. I don't see any other... Oh, there's another guy over here. Okay. I'll just take this one out first. He's got a rocket launcher. That's going to draw attention if he does fire that. Just going to jump over to this side. And now I'm ready to head up. Yeah, I'm at the bottom here. Yeah. Okay. He's fine. Just going to shoot that guy over there. Shoot that guy over there. If you got a clear shot of that amp suit, you're welcome to take him out here. <laughs> I took out one on the uh, on the railing there, on the walkway. Okay, well there goes another one. Okay, perfect. I'm here by the first thing that I'm just going to turn. Let it happen. Oh, Raptor says their uh, ducks are fighting each other. Oh, it's that season. Springtime for you in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, That's also a lovely season. Except if you've got hay fever, then it's not nice. And for me also, I mean, I didn't have hay fever, but as, I've mentioned, as I was mentioning with the grass allergies, or the allergies to the grass pollen and grass seeds, I mean, a lot of grasses are setting their pollen in that season, so it's uh, quite a bad one for me as well. Let's see, who have we got around here? Any soldiers? Walking to the right? No. Just some guys on the other side, on the outside. Just gonna shoot that guy over there. Yeah, he's dead. And then two amp suits and one more soldier at the top there. You wanna shoot the bottom amp suit? Yes. Go for it, dear. Oh, okay. Drawn the attention, but that's fine. We'll just fire. Oh, there we go. Perfect, yeah. Well done. Okay, so there's another one that has the to the amp there's suit. There's a small one. Wanna call the alarm? Uh, no, it's actually running to the amp suit. Um. Running to the amp suit is fine. It gives us more time, but... Hello, where are you? Oh, you're in your amp suit. No, you're not. Not for long. Oh, dear. Okay, that really hurts. No, no, no. Listen, yeah. Not, not nice. There we go. Now he's dead. Okay. So who's up there? There's a guy up there. Okay, fine. Just gonna shoot him before he draws or calls the alarm. Oh! Oh, I'm oh shooting no. a mess. There we go, he's dead. <laughs> I think. I think he was caught between the two explosive tanks. Nobody else? Nope. Oh. We, are, we are using, uh, what is it called? Heavy stealth. It's like, it's still stealthy if there's nobody to call the alarm. Nobody left to call the alarm. <laughs> okay, here we go. Sabotage this. Ah, my child said they love the uh, Thanator video and the in-depth explanation of the different types of Thanators. I love the fact that they actually have four different Thanators. I didn't like taking out the Thanators, I must say, but being able to then actually look at them, that was that was quite cool. And seeing that each one has a very unique coloration. I think that's I really think that is a case of phenotypic plasticity, where they're able to have different colours based on the environment that they are exposed to. Uh, there aren't a lot of animals that I have that I know of that has phenotypic plasticity, but I think the Thanator, at least in the game, has got that. Okay, I was running straight towards some enemies here. What have we got there? Is that a... That's a flak cannon. That's fine. Okay. I guess we're going to go, go up there now. Uh, I think... Oh, we can actually go up here. Okay. Not sure whether they're going to see me. Yeah, there's a guy right over there. Come on, turn your back. Like that. Thank you. Oh, that guy saw that happening. Okay, fine. Die. That guy is like, huh, what's happening? Die. Just, you know, just cause. <laughs> uh, or the RDA must die. We don't want the RDA around here. We just want natural areas. Oh, you know what? I'm running all the way this way. Where do I need to go? Um, right over there. Right over here. Okay. Actually, right here. Perfect. I was running towards the right spot and I didn't even know it. Some spare parts. There we go. And pull that. There we go. There we go. Another one bites to dust. Oh, yes.
But actually, that that uh, Thanator video did far better than any of the other ones. Hmm. So yeah, oh, you know, explosions. I'm not sure. How, well, but uh, yeah, I think that video got 800 views, which was by far the the best video I've had in a very very long time, which is really awesome. Just I feel so thankful. And uh, yeah, I really really enjoyed diving into depth with the Thanators. And yeah, maybe we'll actually encounter one. I think we are going to encounter one later on. Maybe this evening, maybe next week. We'll see. Uh, not to hunt, but to actually just have a look at. And let's just open this up. Okay, and Agaliki says where they live it's getting warmer, but not too hot. That's great. Uh, do you have hot summers there at all, Agaliki? Or no? So it's not, not too hot yet, but you know, do you have hot summers? With us, I think today was the hottest day we've had in a while, and it wasn't that hot. It was like 28, 29 degrees Celsius, maybe. It was a warm day for winter, but not, not exceptionally hot. It's not winter yet. Okay, for autumn. Yeah, that's true. It's not, it's not winter yet. <laughs> General Ardmore, there we go. I am losing confidence in Director Mercer's ability to sustain operations in the western frontier for much mm -hmm. longer. <laughs> even obsessed with issues stemming from our first campaign from Edward. He is mm -hmm. also actively unloading any of his missteps onto others in the surrounding organization. Okay, now let's see. So, Harding, they're not very, not very happy about uh, Mercer. They've got a lot of friction between them. I think there is another RDA facility we can take out somewhere to that side. Somewhere we have put the marker there. But yeah, cool that you and I called our Ikran with different calls, eh? Yes. Yeah, so I would I would interpret that as your Ikran is used to your call and mine is used to my call. Yeah. Uh, they they associate your voice with you and mine associates my voice with me and the specific call. Let's see. Uh, President says it's especially hot in Central Europe, twenty-seven degrees, which is especially hot. Uh, for mid-spring. Interesting, yeah. So we had our... We had about that this past week. We also had... I think we had two other hot days in... in this past week. Surprisingly warm we had recently. But well, we are going to go just... into cooler conditions now soon. Cooler, not cold. <laughs> okay, you see we have got the marker, right here? Uh, 2.7. Yes, that's the one, the three kilometer one. Okay, yeah, this is the cleared facility. We've already been here. I can just see it down there. There's one we've cleared over there. There's another one down here. Yep. We're just clearing the upper plains, making it nice and clean. <coughs> Let's see, I'm just going to put this away. My bow. Oh, the petrified forest. Like, I've seen pieces of petrified trees in the Karoo. Like, but when I say pieces, I've seen fragments, like tiny little fragments. Where you can see the growth rings in there, they've turned completely to stone. Fossilized trees are really, really quite cool. We saw some at Kirstenbosch. Oh yes, there was at Kirstenbosch Botanical Gardens, we recently went there. And there we also did see like big pieces of fossilized tree trunk. Really, really awesome. We should be getting quite close. I think just across the ridge here we'll see them. There's also... There are some helicopters. Probably dropping off troops to destroy the wildlife here. Can't see them though. Not sure where they are. Anyway, across the ridge is where we're going. And in two days it'll be 18 degrees this president as well. So your your temperatures also fluctuate quite a lot, eh? We like we will have we, we always say we often say it's like four seasons in a day where we are, because you'll start out sunny and then you'll have like cloudy and then it rains then you've got thunderstorms and then it's sunny again and in between it will be sunny all between the cloudy and between the rain you'll have a sun bit of sunshine as well it gets uh it's very confusing you never know what weather you're going to get but that's even within a day you'll have that fluctuation happening there it's a balloon for us to take down again while we are at it and i see the little facility I see a little facility down there. 
Gonna go boom, gonna go boom, and I'm gonna make it go boom, boom. Where's the helis that's supposed to be here? The helis? Helicopters. Oh, is that always a helicopter around the facility, around the balloons? Yeah. Oftentimes, but not always. Oh. But usually, yes. Uh, okay. Sorry. Where is my... There we go. Yeah, I've got to do it. Just going to make that weed, like that. And yeah, Galiki says they were they liked the Thanato video, but not too much because of the fact that I hunted them down. Yeah, now I, I did feel bad about killing all of the Thanatos, but it was also for educational purposes. So there was at least some, some method in the madness. I also think they may have been a lot of Thanatos. I think they're all back by now. Obviously, I think they are back. So we have relieved some pressure, opened up some territories, and then of course the. The new Thanatos are able to establish there. I'm just going to drop straight down here below, behind this petrified tree trunk. And then land right over here and run over to them. I think I'm hearing arrow deer around here somewhere. Interesting that even with the wind blowing here, we've got bioluminescence pulsing, eh? Yeah. So that means the bioluminescence is reacting not to an animal moving it but against uh, but to anything moving it any movement of it actually stimulates that uh, bioluminescence which is very interesting now of course one it could be if you're looking at a windy area like the upper plains Ooh, as well there's some predators where are you that'll be i'm right here by you there's okay some cloak there. panthers yeah shame we it's are just going move. to go up here because I think the cloak panthers will stay out of this polluted area. So we're just going to focus on them. There's a nice little amp suit there for you. I shoot it. Yeah, go for it, dear. There's a guy that saw something happening. Everybody saw something happening. Everybody is upset. Everybody ah. dies. Oh, I missed that one. Okay, fine. Oh, no, the blue people. The blue people. <laughs> here we go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that went well. Brilliant. The team blue is on us again. No. Ouch. I got shocked. Oh, I was I... two days away from retirement. Hey. Oh, there's someone left. Look Where? Look at that. Shame, man. Just run and hide. Oh, <laughs> there he was. Don't be brave. <laughs> Yeah, don't be a hero. Hero is just a different way for spell to spell idiot. Because when it comes to us, I mean, really, really, you want to be a hero, don't be a hero. I'm sabotaging. Okay, perfect. And then I can go and pull this one. I couldn't pull it earlier, so now I can. And then there's one more over here. Oh, I make I love making these things go boom. Oh, sorry, so much fun there. Another thing. Oh, that's it. Oh, that's nice. That's very nice. Quick sticks. Yeah. All right, and some more arrow deer coming back. And I see Martaro has also asked. As an ecologist, do you think the devs did their homework in terms of the way the animals behave and act relative to animals around it, or in, in real life? I do think so. I know they worked very closely with James Cameron. I think it's James Cameron. Anyway, they're the director of Avatar. Uh, so he had a great deal of say into the animals and what animals they introduced, because not all the animals we see here on the Western Frontier are actually on the other continent where Avatar 1 and 2 actually play off. So this is a completely different continent, so they brought in a whole bunch of different animals, like, I think, the Self and Goliath. And when we've never seen that in, in the movies and the Echo Stalkers, I think that's also new, Chameleon Crawlers, all these types of things. So I do think they, they did a very nice bunch of homework, like just thinking of the Chameleon Crawler, for example. I think I'm hearing a Storm Glider. Or, or maybe no, maybe it's just the, uh, the, the uh, flutes. The wind flutes. Anyway, the, the chameleon crawler, for example, I mean, that thing will camouflage and take on the texture and the color of the soil around it. Very similar to an octopus, very similar to a squid or cuttlefish, in particular, not, not squid, cuttlefish and octopus. 
And if you look at that, that's typical ambush predator strategy. And the, the chameleon crawler, they are typical ambush hunters. So I love the fact that they will just lie there, wait for you to run past, and then they will come after you. And like the Friday's video, so yeah, two days ago's video with the uh, whip fan crawlers, where it actually says that they are pack hunters. And you will see that if in, the, in the episode also, which I was amazed to see, they actually split off and they actually do a hunt. Because in the Hunter's Guide, they also said that they will use advanced pack tactics to separate and you know, herd the animals. And I could actually see that in the episode as I was running around with the with the whip fan crawlers. And here comes Cinnamon announcing her presence. Hello, Cinny. Oh, it is still raining now because now she's a wet kitty. Hello. Hello, wet one. Hello. Say hello to everyone. Now you're very, very quiet when you speaking to the microphone you don't want to you don't want to uh Cinnamon. don't want to say hello Cinnamon. just wants to eat something mm? Mm. okay yeah okay yeah. Like that. <laughs> oh she's such a cutie though come cinnamon dinner oh she's running towards her mother so she's running to nick there <laughs> to say hello and to the doggies oh the cats and the dogs in this house they get along so well and now I'm just going to do something stupid. You are away from where I am, hey dear? Uh, 11 meters, that should be enough. Hi. I'm going to see how much damage it does if I stand on top of these canisters and shoot it. Yeah, 12 meters away, that should be enough. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm electrocuted. Oh, I meet you. I was just up on top of... Oh, you were on top there, okay. No. <laughs> Cinnamon is like, Dad got electrocuted again. Okay, so let's see here. I'm just going to eat some food here just so that I can restore my health there. Oh, that should be enough. Yeah, I think that's fine. Uh, but anyway, so I think they did quite a lot of research in terms of the animals. And you can actually see a few interesting tactics being used by the animals and they respond to each other. Like here on the upper plains, here you'll have the, the uh, cloaked panthers, for example, running and chasing down their prey and gliding, very similar to things like flying squirrels and the sugar glider and those types of things. Of course, those won't hunt big animals, but still the same principle applies. They've got the adaptations to do it. I'm oh, sorry, a little bit of hiccups here. Yeah? Uh, they've got the patagium or that little stretch of skin between their front and hind limbs, and they can use that to glide. Uh, so I love the fact, and also I love the fact that the animals here, if you go into the hunter's guide, I mean, all the creatures we see here, um, wildlife. All of these are hexapods. They're all six legs and it doesn't feel like it like the subconsciously it is alien because I mean you see this and you notice it's got six legs but it took me a long time to realize that it, they have six legs. I just interpreted this as four legs. I didn't even see that they have six legs because my mind was just looking at wow look at all these amazing adaptations and six legs wasn't even part of it but if you look at it it looks alien. So it looks alien, but it is still very grounded in the in animals in real life and interactions. I'm not sure whether you guys can hear Cinnamon meowing very, very loudly there by Nick. Uh, but she is, what's she doing? Is she trying to draw your, draw your attention? Yeah. Oh, so Cinnamon will, will, if she wants attention, she will, oh, Cloak Panther, Cloak Panther, please stay away. Oh, no, why? Okay, it, it was going to attack. Oh, come on. Okay, so it's a young one. Inexperienced. It's actually away from its pride. Away from the rest of them. There aren't any other cloak panthers. This was the only one that was here. And, you know, if you, I would imagine this possibly being like a young male. Because if you look at lions, for example, the males, all the females are related in the pride, usually related in the pride. And a female, a young female, will grow up and will stay in the pride. So they don't disperse to other prides easily. I don't think that can happen, but rarely happens. Males, on the other hand, you don't want inbreeding in the pride, so the young male over here was most likely a competitor for the male in the pride, the adult male, the, the top top cat, I almost say top dog, but top cat there, and it, he got banished, and he had to fend for himself. And if you look at lions, that's when most lion males or male lions will actually die, because they've got to fend for themselves, they don't have the, the luxury of a pride for hunting, they've got to look after themselves, and they will go for riskier prey, sometimes. Like this little one over here thought, you know what? There are two Navi standing over here. I think that's a good meal. 
and it came for us. I mean, it was patrolling, it's like, oh, food, and it came for us. Unfortunately, this one has now also uh, left this world, it joined, joined Awa again. So, yeah, sorry, go in peace, little one. So, let's see. Uh, let's see. The president also says a little cat sonata for your, for their enjoyment. <laughs> so uh, Nick will rub uh, cinnamon there, and she'll be happy. And the moment she stops rubbing, uh, cinnamon just goes meow, meow, and then you know gives attention, and she's like happy. And then the moment Nick stops, meow, meow again. Oh yeah, oh, I love her. Cinnamon is so cute. Very very. Noisy cat, that's for sure. Well, you know what? This area is actually coming along nicely. This whole the upper plains, really, we are we are progressing nicely. I think let's actually carry on with the story a little bit again. Hey, dear. Okay. Let's go back to the Kamitiri. Uh, actually, no, Resistance headquarters. That's where we're heading now. So Giant's Bane. That's where we are heading. And let's see what happens now because. The uh, Anufi should be by the Resistance Headquarters now to try and <laughs> heal our friends. And Cinnamon is still complaining for attention. Oh, and now she's getting a nice little light spanking with some slippers. Uh, so when we got when we got Cinnamon in, in lockdown in 2020, uh, Nicola has never raised a, a kitten. And I also haven't raised a kitten, but, but it was Nick's baby, basically. And so she raised her like she raised the dogs and so as a result cinnamon is sometimes more of a dog than a cat and yeah it's quite amusing like she likes eating she, she loves getting spanked like she will roll around and wait for us like with her hands in the air and then we have to spank her on the bottom she'll, and she's like she'll rolls be naughty around. just Sorry? to be sure we naughty just to oh, be yeah spanked. yeah she'll bite shoes to get our attention just so she can get a light spanking or and she like purrs yeah, and she climbs up in front of the TV and yeah, she's a very, very naughty kitten, but oh, to get attention so that she can get a light spanking and then she doesn't she want purrs. nice cuddles no, or sit on your cuddle. lap. No. Just wants to be naughty and get spanked. Yes. Spanking is her way or getting spanked is her way of you know cuddle cuddling. <laughs> <laughs> she's a very, very interesting kitten, that's for sure. Oh then I say kitten, but she's a teenager now. She's like four years or old already. Wow, no. she's four, eh? Yeah. Until uh, when are they teenagers? I would say about six or seven. Then we start getting a young adult. Well, actually, I think she's almost a young adult. And uh, then she becomes an adult and then just middle aged, midlife crisis. And then by the time they're Memphis age, yeah, that's midlife crisis heading over to, uh, to retirement. I have nightmares. Okay. So yeah, Anufi is here to try and cure Alma. So let's see. What happens? <laughs> Akalika says they hear the song every day and every night with, uh, with uh, their cats. Also, meow. <laughs> Hello, Anufi. We brought you the meow deer fat. Ah, the fat. Yes, we did. See how rich and smooth it is. <laughs> A healing cell to soothe <laughs> It is gentle, yes, but powerful. Hmm. Interesting that they're using the fat as a salve. I must rem remember to quickly talk about animal fat and the use by oh koi people God. in South Africa. Like Tello. You. Mm hmm. You brought the sky people. Mm hmm. You wanted our children. I saw you in the depths of Mokasa's memories. He told you where to mm. find the Sarantu clan to end them. No, no not to end them. Alma, you hmm. were there. You led Mercer to us. Mm hmm. Uh, Mercer's school, the ambassador program. What's supposed to save lives? Both not me and human. I only tried mm -hmm. to help. You stole our lives. Like you stole everything else. <laughs> Nora's really has never liked Alma. I... Oh, there we go. Let it bleed. Hmm. what you hate, Nord. It needs to die. Let her speak. Why? She is the reason for every bruise and broken bone. She murdered our families. A Hartley! I never meant to hurt you. Then tell us why. You know why! <laughs> this is what you wanted, yes? Revenge against the humans. Revenge? Hmm. This is not revenge. 
You are being consumed. <clears throat> Where does it end? These are our allies. Would you kill them all? And there goes Nor. Hmm. I need to show you the truth. Please. The past is not hidden from the circle of ancestors. Walk with Ewa through hmm. her memories before that shell of skin fails you. Hmm. So now you'll also find out what happened. Hmm. Because this, I think, was in Friday's video or the video before that, the Friday before that. So anybody that has watched some uh, episodes of Snow will know. Good. Hmm. After all this time, we need the truth. Mm-hmm. I'm ready. Interesting that Alma also has, with her Kuru, you can also connect to her share memories. It's not exclusive to Navi, but if you have a Kuru, you can connect, it seems. It's like least. a USB cable. It's like a USB cable, yes. So, uh, Agiliki says that Navi has some anger issues. Yes, Nor does have. He gets Memories upset very, very quickly. Long ago. From myself. From you. Are you also no, here? I'm not going to it. There you are. Shame lies ahead. Mm -hmm. But I must tell the truth. Finally. I remember. Mm -hmm. There was a thrill. Finally, I'd see the Sarintu. Mm -hmm. I told myself we were doing a good thing. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. Can't see the way. <clears throat> Help me. Ignite the bonfires to light my memories. Bagaliki asks, where did he go? So where did Nor go? He ran off and probably ran straight into the DLC. So probably at some in one of the two DLCs, I suspect we are going to hopefully, hopefully we'll find Nor again. I like Nor. We just must learn to deal with his issues, with his anger issues. But this, of course, is the Sarin Two Moot. You can see we are where we were, uh, right under those floating rocks. That's where we were. So this is the Sarin Two Moot just before the RDA. This is where Mokasa told you to find the Sarin Two. Hey, no time for cold feet now. Hmm. We're just talking to them. Do we need this many soldiers? This is our last chance. They're too primitive to understand what we can do for their children. It's for the children? Exactly. Just think what we can achieve, finally. We're helping them. They'll see it. Hmm. Time. So to some extent, it seems that, you know, Alma, to some extent, also was under Mercer's sway and kind of convinced that she's doing the right thing. But I think she also wanted to believe that she's doing the right thing. And then we came. Mm -hmm. Here we go. So here are the Sarin to at the Sarin to Moot, dancing around the fire, singing, playing drums, just having a fantastic time. And of course, telling stories to the children. That's awesome. So, where is I wonder that? what she wanted to help him from. Because it looks like they were pretty fine. Yeah, no, the thing is, the ambassador program, TAP, where we were, that was set up to have some kind of bond between the humans and the Navi, but they needed children to actually educate in English and stuff like that so that you could communicate more easily. Uh, it's really a, uh, an RDA centric type of program or human centric program oh interesting they love the whatever was happening there for a moment uh 
But the idea was, the idea is good, that potentially cooperation between the RDA and the, uh, and the Navi, but it got twisted. Obviously with Mercer in there, he just wants to exploit, and it's very easy, I think, potentially it was also set up, like in the first Avatar movie, to convince the Navi to give up their holy sites and you know, move away so they can come in and just destroy it and harvest the resources. So maybe it also wasn't you know, with the best of intentions. But yeah, no, they were trying to civilize, to make the, the Navi more civilized. But this, this looks like a lovely lifestyle. Hello. I see them. So, so yeah. The armed guards, the armed RDA. I need more light. But yeah, this lifestyle, it looks perfect. I mean, I would love to live like this. Yeah. In touch with nature, out in the wild. Wouldn't be able to make these videos, of course, but still. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what happens now. No! Let oh. Me talk to them. That escalated what quickly. I do feel sorry for Alma, Alma here, where she really was convinced that. It's going to be peaceful, and then obviously Mercer being involved. It's not peaceful. I always said I didn't know. Hmm. But I did. I and hungered I for glory. Notice the barrels already here, hey? Eh? The Ava. At any cost. Already being dumped Our here. Dream began with a massacre. Hmm. Well, very often what happens is that when, when two cultures meet for the first time, yeah, something bad can happen. I had to focus on you. The children. So here is, I think this is Ahari actually, our sister. There's Mercer. Oh, and I could punch him in the face right now. Mm-hmm. Our program. So we stole you. Your clan tried to stop us. Mm -hmm. So we killed them. Even this death won't absolve me of the crimes we committed here. Yeah, man. Hmm. The Navi will never forgive us. Never. Hmm. The Navi will never know. Here, take this. Don't worry, little one. I'll protect you. Sheesh. That's a difficult situation. Hmm. Like Alma wanted her school, the ambassador program, to succeed. But the Kamitire, nobody wanted to sign up. Nobody wanted their children educated uh, with the RDA. I mean, I wouldn't either. No. And so they decided to take children by force. It was either the Kamitire or the Sarintu. So Mokasa gave up the Sarintu so that the Kamitiri children could survive. So to some extent, even he did it with the best of intentions. He tried to keep his Kamitiri clan safe. But then in the process, you know, it turns out that everybody shunned them because everybody believed that they killed the Sarintu. I, I lost the connection. Hmm. I'm, I'm glad I got to show you before. So they almost Avatar is now also kaput. We should bury her. This. Hmm. 
We should bury it. I'll take it. Hmm. Okay. So now you are also clued up in terms of what happened. Oh. How we got to where we are now. You know, even in the in the shorter episodes I make, I also cut out most of the cutscenes, so we don't necessarily see everything there. But we are doing everything, we're not skipping anything in the live streams. Okay, so now. Three skill points. Oh, nice. Yeah, we got three for that. Let me see, I am... Where am I closest? Hunter, I am quite close. Allows you to stealth kill enemies with armored weak points. There we go. Silent Destroyer. That's going to be a very useful one. To silently kill some of the heavy amp suits. I'm nearly completely sure it won't make anyone's hair fall out. I just came to see how you are. Okay, I'm not sure where you are, but you are with Opal. Okay. Aha. Okay. She's not answering her radio? They're in a flux area, so calms are a mess. Mm -hmm. It's silly to worry. She's an ace pilot, but I, I just feel something's off, you know? Ugh, sorry. Food, okay. Everything's so strange back here. <laughs> Nor gone, Dylan gone, and Cortex Can I quickly check my... Well, you know. Don't worry. I'll go check on Anka. Alright, so seismic activity in the upper plains. So we are going to be heading to the upper plains, but I'm not sure whether we're doing that tonight. I mean, that just came out in Friday's video. That was what happened there. I think that's what I did there. I've been taking... I've already recorded next Friday's video, so... <laughs> I'm a little bit fuzzy on what has happened and what is happening in the next episode, but... Yeah, I think we'll probably do that next time. But, what we are going to do is actually upgrade our weapons and armor. We are going to do that. And in order to do that, we need good food and then good material. So we are going to grab some pale, pale fire seed, uh, coronas eggs, cloud spitter seed and vine shroom. And then we're going to make eggs to fry and Navao's mushroom pie. Because and are we these, doing that? Sorry? Yes. Are we doing this now or next week? No, that's, we're going to do that now. Oh, okay. So we're going to travel around the world, around the place. To go find some nice resources and stuff. Okay. I just want to get rid of some of the... Okay, well, how's, how are my pouches looking? Uh, I've got a lot in my in my uh, cooking ingredients. Okay, so I've got to donate this stuff, a bunch of stuff. Let's see here. Too. Either donate... Actually, yeah, I can get rid of some of that. Uh, I think my Ikran actually enjoys the fatty meat, so I'm going to keep that. Wee fish I will put away. Bonehelm Rhino I'll put away. Yeah, lean meat. There we go. I think a lot of this I can put away. Some of the fatty meat also. Okay. I've already got Cloud Spitter Seed, so we don't need to go and collect that. Um, crimson Mushroom. Fire Seed. Normal Fire Seed I have. We need Pale Fire Seed though. Yeah, we don't have that. And then we need Vine Shroom. We also need. Okay, so there are a few things we need. Uh, we are going to be getting those in a moment. Where's that storage basket? Um, I think it's somewhere yeah. this side. Yeah, there we go. Right over here. Um, dun -dun -dun. I'm actually going to dump a whole bunch of stuff. Nectar I can throw in there. Storm glider eggs I can throw in there. Pod fruit I can put in there. Some of these things. There we go. Most of these things I can probably put away. There. That's good. The material here, oh, I can probably throw everything in here. Everything that is not superior, and that which is, which is superior, I can just kind of donate. Yeah, all the exquisite quality stuff. Because with the two meals we are going to be making, we are always going to harvest best quality material, and it's going to even be higher quality. It's going to, we're going to get um, better things <laughs> basically uh let's see da -da -da. just getting rid of some oh we can keep that jack jackhammer's shotgun 
chances of us getting a last cup of if you are willing to go make i'm happy for what coffee. do you want coffee uh coffee would be lovely thanks dear because i had my tea now now so i i think i i can get some coffee <laughs> Oh, the gorilla shorts are better quality, but I'm not going to wear the, sh the gorilla shorts. No, I'm going to wear the well mask maker's waistcloth. Oh, that's going to be lovely. Okay, let's quickly put that on. Okay. Oh, almost combat strength of 16. Marvelous. Now our chest guard is actually under leveled. So what we are going to be making is the best we can possibly make in terms of armor. Rajinder's headband. That's what we're going to go for. And we are going to make Unilux cape. Uh, that's also quite good. Any moss, any tooth and frill stem cones. Oh, perfect. We can get all of that. And Unilux cuffs as well. Heavy hide, uh, pine bark. So we're going to gather a whole bunch of stuff. And that's going to be quite, quite nice, I think. And then we're going to make the best armor we possibly can. And waist cloth here, moss maker waist cloth. We have got that on now, but I think we can make a far better quality one as well. And then Rajinder's ankle guards, of course, as well. So we're going to get a whole bunch of new stuff. Next time, maybe the weapons, but I think our weapons actually are sufficient to take down the RDA. Because next week, we are going to carry on. And I think next week, we are also going to take on unless we have got enough time but i don't think we'll have enough time this evening to do it we are going to take out that laser laser or processor alpha if we've got a combat strength of 20 we can take that out quite nice and easily okay i'm just going to actually go hunter's guide and just just get rid of that okay so what we now have to go and look for uh we need fire seed and we need we don't actually need to get exquisite quality because we can shoot it with a shotgun and voila, it's going to be perfect. But we can pin that. And we need vine shroom. Oh, where is the vine shroom? Vine shroom. Uh, maybe I should just get it alphabetical. There we go. Vine shroom should be over here. I'm just going to pin that so that when we fly around, we can easily see it. And then Corona's egg. That's what we also need. Uh, wildlife. Um, yeah. Actually, we can go material, egg, that's easier. Uh, Corona's nest, we want to get some exquisite quality of those as well. Let's see, okay, so Agiliki says, maybe you are right, that's where the Yava started? Yes, I'm pretty sure those barrels we saw there. So after the whole <clears throat> incident there with the Sarin 2 massacre that happened, they obviously wanted to hide the truth of what happened there as... Oh, Memphis is stealing Cinnamon's food, uh, so they wanted to hide that. And you know, if you just put a whole bunch of toxic substances as a cloud in the Yava, or form the Yava over there, you know, the Sarin two or the friends of the Sarin two are not going to go and have a look there to see whether you no know, they really died due to Anufi's uh, medicine there. So they're going to believe what you tell them. So they. Poisoned this entire area where Tapcon 1 was, where, you know, the whole prog program started, where the, the uh, Sarin 2 children were taken, basically abducted to, and then from there to the Tap School in the King Lord Forest over here. No, I'm not sure. Uh, where were we? With the Tap School? Was that? That was over here, wasn't it? Somewhere in Dyer's Bowl in this area. I think that's, we escaped from here, so it must be here somewhere that it was but yeah so basically that and then where the massacre happened there by the tangled heart just poisoned this entire area and then nobody was able to actually go in to go and check whether Mokasa was telling the truth or not as I've created the Navajo to yeah there we go sorry I only read your, your, your comment there now you had to hide the Sarin to Moot so the Navi could never learn the truth exactly because if they could just let everybody believe what Mokasa told them then nobody would find out what really happened. Uh, so, yeah, now of course we have found out and now a whole bunch of little domino pieces are being moved around and people are aware of what happened and are unhappy about it all. Ah, uh, thanks, dear. The coffee. Marvelous. All right, now I'll really be awake. Okay. 
we are going to go get pale fire seeds, we're going to get Corona's eggs, and we're going to get egg stir fry. Well, right. We're going to make egg stir fry. So we're going to the upper plains and we are going to fast travel to Hydro Injector Alpha. You'll see where I am fast traveling to now, dear. Of course, as we collect the material, we briefly also talk about the material that we collect. Okay, my stick pouch is actually Welcome full. Back. Wonderful. Cortez. I understand. Oh yeah, Alma is being buried. <laughs> so technically, Alma is being buried, but yeah, we're just kind of ignoring her. Well, should, it, should we have been there? Ah, we'll be there next time. That's a new quest, penance. We'll go there another time. Are they going to keep the body? Us. Well, I think it's it's underground already. They're just going to solemnly stand there and wait for us to eventually arrive one day. <laughs> <laughs> there is a bell sprig over here. Oh, it is one that I have had great difficulty finding. But I think there is a cave down here somewhere that one enters. Not 100% sure where, but maybe around this corner. Maybe, no, maybe not. There should be a cave entrance somewhere because there is a bell sprig in there. Maybe it's a little bit more to this side. That's not here. Come on, cave entrance, where are you? I can't see it yet. If we can't find it, then so be it. Then we're going, heading on. I think it may actually be a small section that one can enter up here. It's a challenging one to get to, I think. This bell sprig down below here somewhere. Yeah. I think so. Have you found something? Yeah, in here. Okay, perfect. There's a mural. Nice. We get a new face paint. Grasslands body paint. Okay. I don't know why I struggled to find this so Previously and now. But it, the, the road ends here. I don't think it's this. Oh. Okay. So maybe not this. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. So maybe not. Okay. Well, in that case, I think let's head on. We've got stuff to go get. Um, the first things we are going to collect are the cloud spitter seeds, and if we just look here... I wonder if it's just not around the corner. Just give me one second. Okay. Oh, sorry, not cloud spitter seeds. We're looking for corona seeds. Uh, corona's eggs, not corona seeds. Corona's eggs. Uh, oh, we're at the first Zakri. That's where we're supposed to go. Actually, we're not supposed to go here. This area is where you find the cloud spitter seeds. Can do with some more of those. Maybe we'll go get those as well. So the cloud spitters, they will use, and uh, while Nick is just quickly looking for the entrance, I'm just uh, going to go get some cloud spitter seeds. Unfindable. Is it unfindable? So the cloud spitter seeds here are using explosive mechanisms to get their seeds to be dispersed. And quite long distances, as you can see here. And what quality is that? That is exquisite. That's perfect. That's what we wanted. And so, of course, they don't want their seeds right next to them because that means that they're going to, or the seedlings, they don't want that right next to them because then they are going to compete with their parents. And so they want the seeds as far away as possible so they can germinate far away. And then they not, don't compete with their parents. And building up pressure in a fruit so that whenever there's this light disturbance of something running past you and the, the ground vibrating or something's wings flapping by next next to you you know if that can trigger your fruit to actually squirt a seed out man, that's great and for them this works when there are two more over here they're going to shoot more seeds that one is wasted this one we can potentially get and it is just a superior quality. Ah, oh, I was hoping for exquisite. Just going to see maybe one or two more. 
Okay, oh, we will be under attack by the helicopters in a moment. Okay, this is also just a superior... Co oh, really? Really? You want to die? Nick, seek him! There we go. <laughs> Perfect. I will put the beast on you. Yeah, that's what you get. That's what you get. There's another one. Where is it? There is one further, but it's behind the rocks now. We are just peacefully harvesting seeds, gathering stuff, and then these stupid RDA want to come and mess us up. Ah, there we go. That's another exquisite one. And that is perfect. Okay. Let's just harvest this one. And then we're actually going to head over to the first Zakru deer. I think, yeah, Fury is going. Come, Fury. Come back. Fury went... Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, Fury went on a bit of his own journey. Journey of self-discovery. Okay, so where we're heading now is the top uh, of the upper... Oh, we haven't actually been what's there. What's this smoke here? Sorry? I'm going to check what this smoke here is. It's probably another RDA base. Yeah. Is it? Just a little bit. It's like a campsite. Oh, it's just a campsite. Okay. Well, they're going to die. <laughs> I'm still looking. Oh, there are some fire seeds up ahead. And there are also some... Oh, there we go. There are the... Guys, there are also some cloak panthers up where I was. There we go. There are no more. Nice. Okay, so I am just going to quickly equip my shotgun. I don't use the shotgun, but I'm going to equip it. Why? Uh, because I'm going to shoot the fire seeds so that we can get pale fire seeds. Um, so now I just need to iron me. At least there's no dire horses near. Yeah, <laughs> indeed, indeed. Because yeah, last time when we did that, you uh, set your dire horse on fire. It was a case of look, look at my horse. My horse is on fire, and there are some cloak panthers running up there. I'm really hoping they don't come to us now. I don't want to have to kill more than I already did. Here we go. Here are the little fire seeds, and of course, fire seeds here yeah, they need fire in order to have their seeds germinate or dispersed. They are what we call serotonous, which is basically just uh, they store their seeds in organs that are safe from fire and when, when the plant has burned, those organs will open up and then they will release their seeds. And that's basically what's happened here. So they had their fire resistant cones and then with the fire that happened now, and they're very volatile in this case, with the fire that happened they then have got a uh, they burst into flames or with the, shooting them they burst into flames and then afterwards they release the seeds and with this you have normal fire seed and this is just i think fine quality yeah that's fine quality but shooting them with the lightning should actually change it into hellfire seeds but it hasn't why have you not done this i know previously we may also have battled a bit with that Okay, I have shot myself there. Technically, this should be pale fire seeds. I'm just... Oh, it's, it does say pale fire seed. Never mind. Okay, we're just going to harvest that. There we go. We got our pale fire seeds. I think this is also going to be pale fire seeds. Although it doesn't say... There, at the bottom there, it does say pale fire seeds. There's some more smoke up there. Oh, is it? Okay, some more victims, you mean. <laughs> just going to get one more. No, that's the wrong one. I don't want to harvest that one. I want to harvest this one. There we go. You can see it's a lighter color. Oh, no. Actually, Navi people. Oh, is it Navi people? <laughs> Are they standing around an area where it's a smoky piece Part of, of a, yeah. helicopter? Yeah. Wrong one that I'm harvesting. Yeah, I don't want to harvest that one. I want to harvest this one. This will be the last pale fire seed. All right, there we go. Yeah, the president says, Will unleashing the beast on the RDA. Oh, yes, yeah, you know. I delegate. I delegate the destruction to the beast because I know she'll do a very, very good job at getting rid of the RDA. Let's go, Fury. My biggest passion in life. <laughs> yes, indeed. Biggest passion in life, getting rid of the RDA. It's a lot of fun. 
Uh, and then I see also Agaliki says that helicopter learned the hard way not to mess with the beast. Exactly. And the ecologist. Yeah, the ecologist just pointed the beast at them and voila, <laughs> she did the rest. We're actually going to fast travel a little bit up, higher up dear, to okay. the hunting lodge. Because we haven't even been to the first Zakru on stream. We haven't been to that area, which is amazing. There's, a, there's an ancestor skill there as well. Oh. I can't believe I do know why. We never went up there because every time we wanted to, your game crashed. Because you weren't able to fly and we haven't been in this area ever since you have been able to fly. There's also a bell sprig around here somewhere. Helicopters. And helicopters. Oh, there we go. It's, uh, it's dropped off some RDA for us to shoot. It's dropped off the shooting gallery. Okay, so I'm going to grab Fury. Wherever she is, it. there she is. Sorry? Are you going to shoot from the air? I'm going to shoot from the air, yeah. Cool. There's also a bell sprig that we're also going to then come and grab, and then we're going off to the first Zakru. Hehehe. <laughs> Take that. And a bit of that. And a bit of that. And a bit of that. The Nick got them. And a bit of. No, it's behind the chase. That. Got him. He, he made the fatal mistake of letting his head poke up out a well little done, bit. <laughs> well done, Fury, for keeping me in the air and not like abandoning me in mid flight. Yes. Well done, Fury. I would love to actually have some attack with the. Have, have the Ikran do some attack as well. That would really be amazing. Because with the. Well, maybe. Maybe with the second. With the, with the first DLC. Because if you think about it, it takes a lot of. Trust. It would take a lot of trust for the Ikran to actually attack with you. So maybe with us just being technically new riders, our Ikran are not able to do that yet. But it would be amazing if in the DLC we actually get some kind of attack that the Ikran can also do. Can't you do a have a skill that's a takedown? Yeah, but you know, you can't like really just bite an attack with your Ikran. Yeah. I would love to have that as well. It would be amazing. Like, I don't feel like I'm missing out with the fact that we don't have that. But it would be amazing if we did get that somehow. There we go, just getting more healthier with the bell sprig. And then we are going to the first Zakru. Which is this massive stone structure up ahead. And it's called the first Zakru because it kind of resembles a Zakru walking. And I'm not sure whether the legends of the... Uh, Zeswa clan up here actually say that this is where the all the Zakru originated from but it is a really awesome stone structure as well eroded over time by wind and water to give us this massive massive structure and somewhere at the top there there is an ancestor skill and yeah it was with the fact that you couldn't fly uh, without disconnecting that we never got the chance to actually come up here and now we can we're finally back here. Let's see here. There's something here. I think this is Ikran gear basket. Yeah. I think so. And then on top here, we will also be able to find Corona's nest. So here we have a Corona's nest. And oh, look at that. It is already an exquisite quality. So on this first Zakru here, we have got a lot of the superior, superior and exquisite quality Coronas eggs because this is an excellent, excellent breeding site for the Coronas. The way I see it, this is an area that is quite safe from predators. Though they do nest, if you look in the uh, in the description here, it is commonly found, most commonly found on wind bent trees. So they do nest in the trees on the upper plains, but it is quite, it's not safe from predators. There are lots of predators that can climb the trees there and go and raid the nest. But up here, it is in the middle of nowhere. It's difficult to get up here. It is quite a safe area to actually have your nest. And so you have the more, have a better quality territories basically being up here. And I would probably suspect, or I would ex expect and suspect that the Coronas would fight for control over these nest sites, these amazing nest sites. And the strongest ones will get the prime sites and then the ones that are good but not 
good enough to control the prime sites they will get these sites where we have the superior quality egg for example and then the ones that really are just not very good and not the strongest not the fittest they basically have to go and have their nest up in the trees in the in the upper plains as we are just trying to harvest these ones there we go finally got it out more exquisite, exquisite quality. I love the fact that we don't even have to actually use our Navi sensors to say to see this is a an exquisite quality Corona's nest. You can actually just see the amount of butterflies flying above it. If you have four butterflies, it is superior quality. No butterflies is fine, like this one over here. This one is fine, and then the six butterflies would be the exquisite quality. Okay, I've got enough eggs for now. I think let's look for that uh, that ancestor skill, eh? Well, that is somewhere to the east, somewhere in that direction. Oh, you're flapping your wings, flapping and causing me to go wee. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm probably going to do something stupid by jumping off here. Are now. you getting enough stuff for me too? Yes, I am. I'm getting enough so that we can make meals and then get enough. <laughs> Yes, definitely gear. Don't worry. Definitely doing that. Okay, so somewhere there should be, I think it's down here where we have the actual, there we go, the Taju plant is down below. But I think we access it from the side. Maybe, maybe not from this side. Maybe it's actually, I think it may be, actually, I think I missed the, the turn off. Or the entrance. It's I think the here, entrance. Maybe. I think the entrance is here by this kite yeah. that is flying over here. Just going to collect this kite, the Zeswa kite. And I think the entrance is... Yeah, blue butterflies. There where you are, yeah, not where I am, yeah. There where you are. Uh, oh, you are... Oh, right down here. Okay. Yes, that makes sense. Yes, and there we go, the blue butterflies. Oh, okay. I can't land there. Now I can land here. Great stuff. Thanks, dear, for finding the entrance for us. It's a pleasure. Let's see, this is not a uh, mural to get paint, body paint. Oh, nice. We're swimming. Is it? Nice. Oh, I love the water in this game as well. I love the, the bioluminescence underwater here as well. I wonder if there's going to be a DLC for the water people. Oh, that would be amazing. If not a DLC, there may be a sequel. That would also be amazing. If we can get a sequel, we'll be actually with the aquatic people. All the different... And maybe they'll bring in different tribes than the one we met in the uh, in the uh, second avatar movie let's see here okay so there we go where is the tarju somewhere to that side okay i think we can run around here and just jump around and i think yeah there are some blue butterflies over here as well there's so somewhere down over here we go through and we should be able to find it here somewhere. Ah, it's up ahead there. Okay. Jump down. These are also the butterflies you have around superior and exquisite quality material. So the kaleidoscope butterfly. And now we just go over here. And I see a Taju, but it's a seedling. It's not the main one we are here for. Where's the main one? It is somewhere in that direction. Oh, there it is. I can see it. Okay. Ah, I fell down. Sees the beautifulness. Yes. I am stuck below. Where is, where am I supposed to go? I think over there. No, I can't get up there. Seems like I already got it. Is that possible? No. Oh, uh, maybe in our other game, yes, you did get it. But you haven't gotten it. Well, you haven't gotten it in this game, but you would have that skill because your character has already learned that skill. I haven't. My character hasn't learned that skill yet. Interesting. What is a skill, yeah? Uh, ghost you? strike, I think. Okay, I need to get this. Here we go. 
I think this is Ghost Strike, so that you can actually shoot the enemies without everybody else knowing where you shot from. Yeah, strike. Ghost Strike. Let's see, it deals... Oh, it deals plus 30% stealth damage. Okay, never mind. So it's not to make nobody know where you are, but it is. it does allow you to actually do more damage from stealth. No, I, I need one, two, three, four more, looks like it. Is it? I need deeper connection ancestor skill. Deeper connection will only be able to get next week after we've taken out the big laser ore processor alpha facility. Okay, the rec reconnaissance. Oh, reconnaissance. Um, let's see, ancestor skills here. Oh, I also need that. Wing gust. Um, yeah, wing gust I also still need. And which other one? And way of the diplomat. Yeah, way of the diplomat I also need. Okay. I also need Screech, I think. Oh, no, I have got Screech. Do I? I no. think you do. No, I don't think I... I don't know. I've got 8 of 12, so I also am 4 short. Uh, I've got Screech. Yeah, I've got Screech. I don't have the other 4. I think. Anyway. So there's that. <laughs> right here. Ooh. Um Look at now, these yellow flowers. Little yellow flowers. Looks like daisies. Oh so yeah, right around here. It's interesting that they are actually living in here getting just enough sunlight from the little hole in the roof here mm. to actually grow and flower. But it may have taken them years to get to the point where they can actually flower. Because of the low light conditions, they may have been growing very, very slowly, just waiting for the right conditions, and now finally they can grow. And now we are getting to the King Lord Forest here for the last we must, ingredient. We must go out of here. We can actually fast travel. Yeah, it makes it easier. Slightly easier. Um, there is, we haven't gotten solitude station. We haven't, there's a lot of things we still need to do in King Lore Forest. But you'll see where I am fast traveling to. And then we can also get a facility taken care of there. There is a facility that we can take out. Which is always fun to do. Yeah, I think we'll be able to take this one out with no problem. I don't think this is the one that is story related. I think that one will be... Yeah, that's this one over here. It's a little bit more to the west. West, yeah. This is directly west. Okay. So you see where I am? Yeah. Okay, perfect. I see you have just appeared. Okay, and about 800 meters that way we are taking out a big facility. We may as well run. We are in the King Lord Forest. We haven't been here in so long. We may as well run to it. Boing. Whee. That's so much fun. Okay. Let's see. I hear Navi somewhere. Ah, oh, these puffball trees. Oh, I love these little guys. Let's disperse some seeds, shall we? <laughs> it's like... Poof. Ooh. So as they do that, of course they just do, and I think if we stand close enough it's going to just be a white flash for us. That's, yeah, there we go, Oof. As they do that, Ooh. a whole bunch of seeds actually are dispersed, so it's quite nice for the tree that we have done that. Oh, the fan lizards will always be one of my favorite things to see. Yeah. Little body dangling below as the whole thing just twists around. That poor little lizard, I think it gets so discombobulated. <laughs> yeah, I imagine. Shame. So funny shame. Yeah. It really is a very, very strange creature. Of course, we don't have anything like that on Earth. We do have flying lizards, but we don't have any lizards that go wee around like that. Hey, what do we have here? A flak cannon, that's fine. A whole bunch of other little guys. Just scouting as much as we can. Okay, I think. Safe route, safest route is probably in through here. <laughs> well, this is the route we are taking. What level are these guys? They're probably like... Yeah, they're level 14. We can take them out, no problem. They always expect an ambush, that guy said, and I shot him in the head. <laughs> or on the shoulders, shoulders at least. I'm just going to... Where's the turret, apparently, that I can hack? Apparently, I can hack something close by, but it's probably this thing. Oh. Okay, I've jumped down, apparently. Okay. 
There's nothing, nobody patrolling here, so this is actually a safish spot to fall down. Okay. No patrol route going there. There are a few RDA around. There's there are two soldiers there. Can I maybe rotate this thing? Yeah, you can, yeah. This guy knows something is up, but he doesn't know what is up. But his time is up. <laughs> I hear a guy. Oh, there he is. Hello there. Just turn around. Yes, look the other way and boom. Done. Just like that. No explosions, no nothing. Okay. Right, so that's one thing down. Next up, up ahead. He he he. Sneaking, sneaking, sneaking. Sneaking, sneaking. Exosuit there. Normal soldier. Exosuit soldier. Okay. I shoot the suit. Yeah, go for it. I'm ready to run in to just mop up whatever happens. Nothing really happened. Sorry? Nothing happened. Oh, you shot him. Okay. Well, I'm shooting that guy. Somebody at some point is probably going to realize that the guys are dropping like flies. There we go. Thanks, dear. Where's that last guy? There should be one more. Oh, he's way up there. There is a guy walking up there. Oh, he, he realized that. Okay, I'm shooting at him. And he's dead now. Oh, there is one down here. Hello there. Goodbye. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Do we have anybody else that wants to die? Nobody? Okay. Where are you, dear? You want to go turn that thing? Let's see, where is that thing? It uh, should be oh, up, up here, here somewhere. Then we're heading in that direction. Okay, that's perfect. Okay. Yeah, it's heading up. Uh, let's see. Would be a good DLC to see the Water Navi and ride their mounts. Oh yes, like the Illu and the Skimwing. That would really be quite awesome. Such a different scene, basically, or environment to be in. Uh, the door is over here, though. Have you? Oh, you've got it. Okay. Okay, perfect. So there goes another boom. And then one last thing to go do: shut down the main plant, rock, main plants, rock grinders. Okay. Just heading in that direction then. Nice and easy to get rid of the RDA. They are quite flimsy most of the time. Like that guy, he was extremely flimsy. <laughs> And that guy just like takes a massive arrow to the chest. There's no coming back from that. Now I think I just need to run over here and flip a switch. On and it. voila! Off it goes. I see President is heading off, so cheers President, thanks cheers, for popping President. in. Hope you have a lovely, lovely week. And we'll see you next week, definitely. Stay safe, eh? And, uh, yeah, thanks again for popping in. Really appreciate it. Okay. Another facility has been taken down. And now, since we are in the King Lord Forest, of course, we've got hexapedes standing up there and coming past here. Oh, I love those little critters. Hmm. <laughs> Never saw us coming. Huh. Being quiet has its upsides. Open up. I'm opening. I'm opening. I'm doing my best. 
Technology is slow. It's taking a break. Okay. Guns, um, guns, guns. Yes. Let's see, there's a status report for this thing. Uh, basically just again saying everything is all right. Just make sure that things work well. Um, that plants are being affected, but don't worry about it. Animals are being affected, affected and just increase security because the Navi is just going to attack you more. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, don't worry about the animals. Don't worry about the plants. We really only have to worry about the machines working well and the fact that, you know, you're going to be attacked now by the Navi, which happened. They did not increase security enough. Okay, now we can just quickly travel to a camp so I can make us some food. And then we can eat those. Oh, no, okay, actually, we should have flown up to the islands. <laughs> uh, to the floating to the floating rocks in the sky. That's where we are heading. And I think we are heading probably around that point. On the underside of the islands, you'll, we'll find vine shrooms. It really is quite cool, though. I'm just going to point my ikran in the right direction and then just kind of fly. Because if we look at the vine shrooms while we are flying, and I think I'm still flying. Um, this is for mushrooms. So if you look, da -da 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 the vine shrooms, yeah, they're growing on the other side of the rocks. So it doesn't say much, but it does say protrudes from a hanging stem. The vine shrooms grow attached to giant vine trees and some floating rock formations as a watery consistency and often dried before cooking. It kind of resembles a moral, but also kind of like a like a stinkhorn basket type fungus. Yeah, fruiting head of a fungus. They grow across Pandora and are used by the Navi in many ways, primarily as food, but often also as medicine. So with the vine shrooms hanging on the underside of giant vines or hanging on the underside of the rocks here, it means they are either semi-parasitic on the vines or they are just breaking down rocks like lichens would do to also just get the nutrients they need and the energy they need to uh, survive. But I think they are to some extent at least semi-parasitic, getting their nutrients from the vines that they are growing on. But yeah, so we are just going to go and get some. They should be on the floating rocks, on the underside of the floating rocks. We should see some hanging around. I'm just scanning to see if I do see any here, not yet. Well, they're not under all of these, but they are going to be under some some of them. Hmm. The ones, the exquisite ones. That's going to be ideal. What do we have here? I think I may have some up here. Should be under Mind these. Mushroom rocks. exquisite. Is it yeah. nice? So what you'll do is you'll just fly under them there's a superior one there's a normal one no? you'll just slowly fly underneath them and then your character will automatically reach out and grab it so there is a vine shroom exquisite quality over here as well we're just going to fly underneath them hopefully come on pick it i think this one is one that is difficult to actually get there we go i finally got it Sometimes you need to swing around and around and around and around to actually get it. I think I've lost even the place where I saw. Is it? Oh yeah. There's another exquisite one here. So I'm just again going to fly past it, reach up. Hopefully, come on, reach up and grab it. I suppose to. Oh, there we go. I got it. Okay. Great stuff. Can you come here where I am? Okay, heading over to you, dear. I'm inbound. Let's see, where are you? Oh, you're up there. Okay. Coming up to you. Dun, 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 dun. My mind doesn't want to grab it. Oh, yeah, sometimes it does struggle. Hello there. Let's see how you're doing. With difficulty, this is a difficult one to actually get. It's flying fast, it doesn't fast, it doesn't work. Flying fast, slowly. 
they didn't want to collect it either. Maybe this is one of those bugged ones where you can't get it. Obviously my luck. Oh, I did reach up there, but I didn't get it. How many do we need? Uh, I have four. My guy keeps on reaching up but not picking it. I think with the vines that are here, it's a bit of a problem. Well, I think I also do, I should have, I do have the cooking skill that actually makes me have, make two food at a time. So we can actually just fast travel to a point and make the food. I think braided vine is a good spot for us. I think that's a good spot, yes. And then it's cooking time. Let me just check my pouch. Yeah, I've got a lot of food in my pouch. Um, I'm going to donate a lot of the food. Let's see here. Creamy egg fry. Yeah, we'll get rid of that. Mixed meat stew. Yeah, all of these things we can get rid of. Okay. So I am going to just quickly. So now, now that we have... Bellfire seeds, Corona's eggs, and also the vine shrooms and the cloud spectre seeds here. We are in the pound seeds. We can now make egg stir fry and Novao's no, no mushroom pie. So first of all, pale, oh, no, 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 yeah, pale, pale fire seed. There we go. That along with the Corona's egg, which is right up here. That is going to give us the egg stir fry. And we'll see whether we get one or two there, but there is a chance for two. Two meals, wasteless cooking, basically. But we are going to just at least do this twice. Okay, great, we got that. And again, we'll just again do it with the pale fire seed. And the Corona's egg here. Just cook that. And that's going to be another one or two eggs to fry. My little guy is humming, is enjoying the cooking. Cooking is delightful, it's lovely to cook. Okay, this will give us Nimble Gatherer level 3, which is plus 20% core stats when you are gathering, which is really, really marvelous. Um, so let's just quickly check here, how is my part looking? I've got three, so I'll make one more. Then I'll have either four or five. Just going for the pale fire seed once more, and then the Corona's egg here. Mixing it all together. And in we go. Okay. Now, I'm going to give you some, dear. But you're going to do the gathering, I guess. Yeah, but then you also have it available. Okay. How's your pouch looking in terms of food? It's okay. Oh, I've got one space. You've got one space, okay. How many spaces do I need? Well, technically two if you want okay. to get both. If you want need to eat something both. else. Okay. Okay. Then we're going to make the second thing, which is Novao's mushroom pie. This is where the cloud spitter seed comes in, which is right over here. Cloud spitter seed mixed with vine shroom, which is right over here. We're just going to make... I think two of those, and that should then be enough for us. And this is going to allow us to always gather material perfectly. So no matter how crappily you pull it, no matter if it's in the wrong in conditions or anything like that, we are gathering it perfectly. Uh, so always perfect gathering. And these two combined will mean that you can, when you're harvesting something, not when you like killing an animal and you know, harvesting that, but when you're harvesting plants, you will always gather it perfectly and you'll always get like extra quality stuff. Okay. And I'm gonna drop one for you, dear. Okay, I only made two there. Interesting. Okay. Can I have it? Just gonna drop that. And then I'll just make one more. And uh, that should then be enough, at least for now. Cloud spitter seed and vine shroom. There we go. And then we are all set to do a little bit of harvesting or gathering. 
I will probably be gathering a bunch of other stuff off screen uh, later on, you know, uh, between now and two weeks from now. But it is important that we at least do some gathering. So let's quickly just eat our... So which one do we need to eat first? That's the question. The one that's going to give us 15%. So we need to eat the mushroom pie first and then the egg stir fry. Because eating the mushroom pie first means that you have forager and you... So you always have perfect gathering but you only get 15% core stats. The egg stir fry gives you 20% core stats. So it replaces that one. Which is marvelous. Okay. You ready, dear? Yeah. Okay, so let's see what we are harvesting first. Um, journal, let's just see what we are gathering. And not recipes, designs. I think let's go for nice weapons, hey? Yeah. So a heavy bow and then also the short bow because those are the two weapons we use yeah especially so, the heavy bow for me yes so i'm just going to have to write down here we need roots so roots we need two reeds we need two horns we need two that's for the heavy bow for the uh, not a long bow, short bow. We don't use a long bow anymore. Resin, we need two. Horns, we need another two. And bast fibers, we need two. So we need four horns, two roots, two reeds, two resin, and two bast, bast fibers. And then we'll be able to make two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we'll be able to make two long, uh, two short bows and two heavy bows. And I think let's actually start worth because we could have gotten this even without the mushroom pie let's head to drill tower charlie yeah drill tower charlie on the right hand side we're going for the pale uh, canopy roots once more so agiliki asked what are you going to do we are going to make better armor and or better weapons at least now so that we are really up to par for the Oh, you know what? I just realized now I said we're actually going to make armor rather than weapons because our weapons really are quite good. Yeah, it's quite. Yeah, okay, never mind. Uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to make better armor. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but uh, technically, with the thunderstorm that's happening now, we could technically get the canopy route without any problems. Uh, we need shells. Two of those. Cones. Two of those. And crimson bark. So we're just going to go around collecting some materials so that we can make some very nice armor so that when we go next week we will be able to go take out that laser ore processor alpha. Uh, Unlux cape we're also going to make because my chest armor is really really bad. So uh, moss we're going to get two. Tooth we need two. And frill stem cone. We'll also get two of those. And I think with that we'll be all set. I think if we can get that for tonight, I will be I will be happy. Uh, Agiliki also says try and hunt a bone helm rhino. I think we should do that. Mm, the bone yeah. helm rhinos have been attacking us, and it's time for a little bit of payback. <laughs> Just a wee little back, bit of payback. Uh, they are in the white moss forest biome. So let's head over to VSM installation Charlie. You'll see where I am going to, and let's go hunt. A bone helm rhino. You're right there, dear. Yeah. Cool. Wait. Okay, perfect. I'm just going to get rid of three other things at the top there. Let's actually. Uh, I think we get horns from them. Yeah, bone helm rhino. Let's just pin that. And then, in terms of tooth, what animal's tooth are we going for? Um, I don't want to go for the storm gliders. Echo stalkers are quite cool. And they will give us plus 10% wildlife damage. Oh, that's nice. Um, we even have... I don't think we've even 
scan the chameleon crawlers. Really? I don't think so. Let me just check. But I don't think we have scanned. Oh, we have. We have. Okay, we don't get any teeth from them. Yeah, they don't really have massive teeth. <laughs> That's true. Okay, for for teeth, I guess we'll go with the Echo Stalkers. Yeah, the Wolfman Crawlers don't have either. Uh, so where's the Echo Stalkers? We are going to pin them as well. And then for Crimson Bark, of course, we are going to go... And shells. We are, I know where to get the best shells, I think. Okay, so anyway, we are hunting Bonehelm Rhinos. They're going to be somewhere in here. So let's grab our Ikrans to go and find them. And then, instead of using our Ikran to actually shoot them, we are going to sneak up on them. How does that sound? Great stuff. It sounds dangerous and fun. Oh, there's another budding watcher over there. Oh, you know what? Victims! Hehe, <laughs> hello there! Oh! That did nothing. Okay, I'm going to just fly in like this. And with my short bow, take them out. Like that, come on. Stop shooting at us, this is what you get, okay? Stop shooting at us, you will die. There we go, I think that was it. Yeah, because nothing is better than uh, when you're on a hunt to, than to also just hunt some RDA. Now for this, for the Bonehelm Rhino, we've got to get them in the white moss uh, forest biome, which we technically have just left. Let's fly towards my marker. All the while scanning for the Bonehelm Rhinos. And they will be around here somewhere. What have we got there? We've got chameleon crawlers, mature chameleon crawlers. There is one right over there. There's also a whole family actually of them here. They're kind of chilling. Not what we are after though. We are looking for... There, there's a Bonehelm Rhino. There are also some RDA up ahead. It's just a young one though. We need, I think, prob probably, preferably, I think, an adult. I'm hearing another one. Prob possibly that one I just heard. There's some more chameleon crawlers. Oh, there's one right behind us here. A young one. Oh, they really are such cool creatures. Maybe we should just take out some of the young ones. Yeah. Just going to stalk this one. I mean, you can see they're almost impenetrable armor on the top, on the head. Only real weak spot is that glowing bit right over there. It doesn't know we are here yet. So we are just going to let loose into that weak spot and run forward to get to it before the shroud covers it. Thank you for these gifts. You want to shoot the next one? See the next one. There is one over here to this side. It's also, oh, there are also chameleon crawlers right over here. Not sure whether the chameleon crawlers are going for us or not. But I think they're actually hunting that Bonehelm Rhino. It's a whole pack of chameleon crawlers. There's a lot. This, this is a whole pack. The whole bunch of adults, a whole bunch of adolescents there also, but they have moved off. Leaving the Bonehelm Rhino for us. You are behind me, eh, dear? Yep. Okay, perfect. I can spot one right up here. From this rock, you should have a good vantage point. Yeah, right over there. It's a really, really a tough creature. Maybe if you stand on my right-hand side, you'll have a better view of the, of the weak spot. Okay, can you see him? Yeah. Well Got done. It. That's a perfect shot. And we got to it, so you can actually harvest it. Thank you for these gifts. Oh, superior. Sorry? Superior stuff. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, this is more... This would be more closely related to rhinos than to other creatures, because uh, we can't see it when they're walking. It always is difficult to know how many toes they have, but as this one has fallen down, you can see that it has 
three toes. So it is an odd, odd toed ungulate, meaning it is more closely related to rhinos and tapirs and horses than they are to things like cattle and goats and your, your even toed ungulates and giraffes and stuff like that. So uh, it's quite cool. Um, I was actually wondering about whether they are odd toed or even toed ungulates. And I think previously I had a look. And if you look in the hunter's guide, I think it looks like it is an even toed ungulate. Um, there we go, Bonehelm Rhino. Look at it, it's difficult to count to know whether it's got three, and that obviously if it's lying down like that, we can count it. And then you can see it has got three toes. Anyway, I was wondering whether it is an odd toed or an even toed ungulate, and now we know. Oh, there is something in this area. Uh, chameleon crawlers. Yeah. Uh, run away? Yeah, I don't want to kill them unnecessarily. Let's go to those RDA, maybe. Oh, yes. Where were the RDA? Yep, that's our Ekrans. Oh, is it? Oh, I see they are the little arrows. Yeah, let's go take out some more RDA. That's always good. Are you going to fly or run? I'm running. They're quite close, I think. I think we are under attack. No, we're not under attack by the chameleon crawlers. I thought we were, but no, we're not. Okay. Oh, they're right over here. Four of them, ready to die. Oh, I just shot him with a shotgun, okay. Uh, I thought I still had my grenade launcher there, but I didn't. Okay. Got a few shots on me, but that's alright. I need to switch over to my grenade sling. Because, yeah, I didn't want to have my shotgun equipped. Okay, I think we got the RDA sorted out here before they killed any of the local wildlife. Yeah. Which is wonderful. Okay. Oh, there's a local wildlife here. Yeah, what? Eh? Oh. What was this? Oh, it was a dire horse. There aren't even dire horses in the clouded forest there, and they shot the one that was here. Oh, they brought it here. Oh, they dumped it here. Yeah, that's true. Could have brought it here. Okay, let's see here. This is just a normal dealer of fine quality one. Okay, so let's see. What we now need are shells. The shells we can get right here from the Weeping Giant. Uh, where is the Weeping Giant? Uh, somewhere there is like... Maybe it's more to the north? Oh yeah, the, the Crying Giant, not Weeping Giant. The Crying Giant. If we go there, we'll be able to get the Pale Mud Gem Shells. Which is nice and strong. You are by me, hey? Yeah, I'm coming. Okay, perfect. I just want to double check that you, you haven't disappeared. Well, we can see the big rock formations up ahead. That's where we're heading. I see there you are, you're right behind me. Perfect. Now Shane President had to go because he's got a busy day tomorrow. We've got a public holiday tomorrow. Yeah, I'm only working half day. Yeah, nice. I'm not working at all. Although I will be writing reports probably. A little a little bit. Just a little bit. Just gonna give my little Ikran some chameleon crawler fatty meat. Oh well, that wasn't enough. You want more? You want eggs as well? Ish. Yuri is hungry. Okay, let's see here. Oh, it's nice for you to be able to fly, eh? Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> finally. Yeah, finally. So you also ate your mushroom pie and stuff, eh? Mm. Okay, great. So you also have that, have that uh, yeah. skill. So when we get the, the uh, gems or the shells, you can actually harvest one yourself. Yes. If, and uh, with the pale ones, it will be exquisite quality automatically. So that's nice. Okay, now right here on the island, there should be one. Or I think right over here there should be. I'm just going to dismount and drop down. 
this normal blue blue cloud or cloud moss. And then I think there are mud gem shells. There we go. There is a pale mud gem shell right over here. Right over here under me. And then there should be a few others around here. There we go. There are somewhere here as well. Yeah, pale mud gem shell. Great place to find them. And now with the it doesn't really matter whether we accidentally pull and break it or whatever. It will always be pristine and the highest value we can get. Or actually better than the highest value we can get. 156 uh, health. That's a nice one. I also want to just double check. Um, pouch. Or we just collected. It also gives, restores 15% health after killing an enemy. Oh. That's also a nice one. Yeah, very, very nice. nice. Okay, so I can tick off shells. We have that. Cones up next. In terms of the cones... Um, in terms of... No, no, type material cone. We've got snakewood cone. That is going to give you... Plus 5% melee resistance. Yeah. Uh, that gives 124. This one is also... This one's elemental resistance. This one gives Ikran stamina. That may actually be a better one for us. Yeah. So forest pine cone, that is where we are going. Okay. And it is, oh, it's at the peaks of Giant's Bane in the center of the clouded forest. So actually where we came from now. Uh, Giant's Bane is, yeah, it's actually there by the, Resistance head hideout. So I guess let's fast travel there. There's two huge geckos in our wall kitchen. Oh my word, I see the one. Yeah, it's like that's that size gecko. It's a couple. They, there's two. The other ones behind the curtain. Yeah, either fighting or you know, killing there. Are oh, they nice? But oh, it's not nice to get gecko poop in the in the kitchen. <laughs> that is not nice. What? Okay. I use it in the cooking. Oh, it saying. gives extra flavors and nutrients, eh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You ready, dear? Loading. Oh, you're loading. Okay, because I know you... Oh, you're four kilometers directly that way. Okay. Right. Ah, there we go. You have popped into existence. We can run this way, and then we can actually just go bury Alma's avatar. <laughs> Since we are here now. Yeah. We may as well get that sorted. Now, Viliki says those these shells are really good crafting materials. Indeed, they are. Like you would, I think that one, the shells you use. If we're looking at the design, I think you use that in the uh, headgear. Here we go. The head, the head, the Regindus headband, and I think it would be like a little bit of extra protection. I I just kind of imagine the two mud gem shells are like the little. Armor over your ears. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with the Navi having slightly pointed ears. I mean, you can put them nicely as a little armor there. Protect your ears nice and uh, safe. Okay, here we go. Here's Alma's. Alma is kneeling by her own body. Now, there is a sentence we didn't think we'd say. Hello, guys. Okay, I think you need to come a little bit closer. We need to, like, almost stand on the corpse. How does person mourn for themselves? Mm -hmm. My own body is a stranger to me. I look down at these hands, and I... It's like I stepped out of my skin. It was never you. Mm -hmm. The real you. Wasn't it? Don't they say the body's inseparable from the mind? I miss being out here freely. Mm -hmm. Watching this world through glass, I, I feel separate. From Pandora, from you, after so many years, the Avatar felt like my true self. You wore that skin so long, you forgot your true self underneath. Mm -hmm. That does not make you not V. Brinella is having none of it. Easier to bear. Hmm. Playing make believe. I understand the pain you're feeling. You understand nothing. All this time, I thought you a friend. A mentor. Someone who only wanted to protect us. A Hari knew our families would never abandon us. And you let us believe it all the mm -hmm. same. I know there is nothing I can say to make this better, but I, 
I promise I your promises are worthless. <laughs> Ashes in your mouth. Brunella, <laughs> she just walks off. <laughs> it's just like dissing her and then just like, okay, bye. Speak to the hand because I'm not listening. <laughs> uh, okay, so we get to In this form you gave us okay. nothing but lies. What did you do? No, oh, I just I just kicked some. Uh, okay. So I guess I'm not forgiving. No, and that automatically means I'm not getting forgiving. Yeah, uh, we're either. angry. Yeah, you you're very angry. We're angry. I didn't know that I could choose. I was just like, okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. you you were you were like deciding in the moment there. Like I yeah. was just about to say, okay, so we can choose to either accept her or not. And no. you were it should it should have been that. Yes, just automatically no. No, no, there will be no Alma. forgiveness here. Bad Alma. <laughs> Bad Alma. <laughs> Alma can just go. Just <laughs> go. <laughs> oh, good this be. Okay. Well, we're flying to the top, I guess, now. I love how the Ikran make their entrance, eh? It's like, yeah, we're here. Now, we just have to look out for forest cones. Forest pine cones should be by the cl close to this base. There we go. There are some here. The superior quality. Uh, yeah, there is exquisite here as well. So at the base of these trees, you may find some pine, some cones. There are like a whole bunch here. On this one, you can look for an exquisite quality. Harvest that. Yo, let's see which one is exquisite. That's superior. That one's exquisite. That one's also exquisite. Okay, perfect. Away. Okay, turn it, uh, pull to the left. There we go, we've got that one. You also have an exquisite there, dear? Yes. Okay, perfect. For 123. I think that was 123. Sorry? 95. What? 95. 95? Okay, maybe I should just get you one as well. No, how much my shell was then? 120. Interesting. Okay. Um, I think maybe you've got better gathering skills. Maybe, but you ate the mushroom pie, so you should have yeah. actually done that. Anyway. Okay. Oh well. <laughs> Nonetheless, we now have the cone as well. Come on. Why can't I climb on Fury? Come on, Fury. Let me... There we go. Climb on. Okay, so we've got enough cones. Now we need crimson bark. Crimson bark and some kind of moss. And then also frillstem cones. Okay. A hunter's guide, cone. Where do we get frillstem cone? Oh, I don't know yet. Oh, there we go. I do know. Where? Okay. Um, that is... In the giant's wilderness biome. Oh, I don't like that one. In the uh, clouded forest. That's where all the ferals are also hanging around. Okay. So let's just... Maybe let's head there. We're traveling. Yeah, we will be... We will be flying. I think it's this area. I think over here we can probably get... It. That's nice to fly. We can fly nowadays. Only 3.3Ks. It goes by so fast. So uh, Agiliki says, like, I can understand Renella's anger. Definitely, eh? I also understand why she's so upset. I would also be, like... Alma has been lying to us the entire time, and yeah. now expecting us just to, like, forgive and forget? She could have told the truth by now. Yeah, she could have. She had a lot of time to actually tell the truth. And then she left us for how many years in our cryo chambers, and then only came when... When the RDA came back, she's like, oh, maybe I should have a look and see whether they're still alive. I'm going to go look at them and try and see if they're all right. And no. No, 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 Alma. We do not accept that. You are full of nonsense. Your words or promises are ashes in the wind. Arunella is just like, no. Having none of this nonsense. Okay, so these big... I think these are the full stem trees that we've got over here. Yeah, this is the full stem tree. These are the ones that we're getting the cones from. 
But I think the best ones we'll get about a kilometer away. There are, however, a whole bunch of little things we can destroy up here. We can turn them into ashes in the wind as well. Just checking to see... Oh, you are right by me. Hey, right up there. Okay, perfect. So we're going to take them by storm, eh? Let's get rid of everyone. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. And then we'll we'll let this this you know, blow up as well. Oh no. Okay, why did you launch me straight up into the air, Yuri? Having a bit of fun there. Okay, there we go. Yeah, slowly but surely. Auto completing. And then Nick gets to blow something up again. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Make them go boom. Okay. You can shoot it here. And boom. I love the explosions. Okay. Now, frill stem this way. I don't see any. We are here for frill stem cones. Yeah. Okay, I don't see any frill stem trees though. Oh, there is one here. There is one down here. Okay. Got it. There's also a bell sprig here, eh? Yeah. Ah, wonderful. I can see them. Let's see. What quality have we got? Ooh. We have got sulfur pods for you here, dear. Three. Oh, nice. Okay, and we have two exquisite quality frill stem cones. Okay, which way to pull? I think down, straight down, yes. So that is 123 again. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> nice. Nice. Okay, so frill stem cones I can also tick off. Then we're left with tooth and moss and crimson bark. Okay, so in terms of moss, let's see, which one are we going for? Moss, 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 moss. This is moss lacquer. <laughs> uh, trail moss will give us range resistance. That's nice. Blue cloud moss will give us stealth. That's maybe, maybe even better. Crimson creeping moss isn't as strong. Okay, so blue cloud moss, that's what we're going for. And they can be found near Singer's, Fall, Singer's Falls in the west of the clouded forest. Ah. Huh. Growing on large rocks in the borderlands. Okay. Singer's Falls. Where is Singer's Falls? That is now the question. Ah, there we go. In this area. Okay. Let's head there. 4.9 k's of flying deer. Right. Oh, it's lovely. Like the other day, I was actually playing this, and you know, just for fun, just flying in my my single player game. And it was just so much fun just to fly and look. I think I actually flew... I flew along... Where was it? Here. Between the clouded forest and the upper plains. And as I was flying along, the sun actually just rose. And I just looked out over this beautiful, beautiful landscape. And it was just so amazing. Just to... Almost felt cathartic. Just kind of reflying around. Looking at everything. It was just beautiful. I love that. And just being able to just chill in this game is also a lot of fun. So I think even if, if when we complete the game, I'm still going to just fly around and look at everything and just occasionally come and hunt the RDA just for fun. <laughs> Get rid of them. And then, of course, when the DLCs come, we'll be playing it again. But, you know, with Ubisoft, who knows how long that is going to be. It may be delayed, maybe on time. We'll see, I guess. Hello, Memphis. Memphis is saying hello again. Yeah, no, I haven't got Cinnamon's food on there. Let's see. We're looking for the moss. <laughs> he, he stepped on some sticky tape. 
And now, uh, Ben, just come here. <laughs> he's got sticky tape stuck to his hind foot and he's just like flicking it. Come, and just, come my boy. Uh, let's get this off, shall we? Sorry guys, just a little cat interruption here. Feline interruption. Oh, he already got it off. Okay. Now you can just say hello to everybody in any case. Oh, he's like, okay, I'm just chilling. Hello. Say hello to everyone. There we go. It's Memphis time once more. Okay. Bye, Memphis. <laughs> Can't believe he actually managed to get the sticky tape off because he was like, he looked a little bit in distress here for a moment. Okay, that's the frill stem tree still. Okay, what we're still looking for are moss. The mosses. Okay, 2.3 case. Oh, there's a lightning strike right where I was. Right. And here, of course, we've got some carnivorous plants also just growing on the rocks there. They are waiting for little birds to fly past so they can snag them out of the air. Terrified. Oh, there's another lightning strike there. I never got that bell sprig that was where we were. Oh, well. Here's another bell sprig here as well, though. Uh, apparently, we've got company. Are you under attack? Yeah, by me. Oh, are they? See, are you up over there? Okay. Oh yeah, I see the explosions. Oh, where yeah. are you? Oh, right there. Oh yeah, yeah, right there. And there we go, another one bites the dust. How's your health? Yeah, your health is perfect. <laughs> They've got nothing on you. Algaliki oh, says, I hope the DLCs are as good as the rest of the game. Oh, I also hope so. It would be amazing, just... I, I would love if they could expand into different areas to increase the map size. Um, some new areas to explore, that would be, like, amazing. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to also just seeing what they have in store for us. Sorry, you wanted to say something, dear? Hmm? Did you want to say something? I'm just enjoying the flight here. Oh, yeah. yeah. What have we got? We've got something over here. Maybe another bell sprig. No, it's bladewing moth. Okay, I don't care about bladewing moth trails now. But there is... What is this? This is... Oh, this is Kite Manta Nest. No, that's not what we're looking for. I think somewhere on these rocks we previously found the mosses. Somewhere around here. I think down at the bottom of the falls. That's where we were. Oh, look, there's RDA. Come on, guys. This is not nice. You're gonna die now. Because you are RDA, and we don't like RDA at all. Okay, it'd help if I had, if I had ammo, eh? Fine, go, go die. There we go. Thank you. You too. Die. 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 And then die some more. There we go. Thanks, dear. I think that was everybody. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Love getting rid of the RDA. The marvelous pastime. Not much here for us to actually salvage. A little bit of a uh, thingamabobs, little uh, spare parts. This little container here to open. Gave me gorilla pouch. Waste cloth mod. Pff, don't use those things. Not the RDA ones in any case. And then somewhere I think up here, we most... Uh, there we go. There are some mosses there. Blue cloud moss. But somewhere they should be good quality. I just see fine quality thus far. I think we found on these rocks previously. Leading up to the actual falls. Maybe? Maybe up there. Can see it. Okay, where the lightning just struck. I think that's where we found it previously. Just jumping up here and it's fine and fine. And more fine. Really? Because I know when we came to 
Way there at the top, I think. Somewhere, wherever the uh, Anufi's hideout was. That was around here. Well, somewhere. Maybe not here. Maybe that was a little bit more to the north. But I know we did find. Um, let's just double check here. This red or blue cloud moss can be found near the Singer's Falls in the west of the Clouded Forest. And large rocks in the boulder lands biome of the Clouded Forest. You know what? I'm going to take this guy. I mean, this is a large rock. This is like the perfect place for it, and it's not here. Okay, Fury, we're taking this guy. Looking for some moss. From up there. Hmm. Maybe it's like above this first waterfall. We'll just double check here. Obviously a lot of plants and mosses and stuff like that, they all have very specific growing conditions. So it makes sense that you need to really find them. Some of them prefer growing on southern slopes, some of them on northern slopes. So some of them need more shade, some need less shade. And I like the fact that you do have, to some extent, that being shown in the game here. Where certain plants you'll get good quality in this area or that area. Just going to continue looking to this side. No, not here. Any down there, maybe. There are a whole lot on this side. Just want to check what quality they are. Any. Oh, there's some, there's some here. Yeah, there's superior. Superior. Okay, so we're on the right side. There's a fine superior. Oh, there we go. There's an exquisite and another superior. Okay, I'm going to go get that exquisite if I can. If it isn't in the rock itself. Go on, watch how that's going to be the case. Ah, uh, no. Falling off here. Okay, there we go. Yeah, there's an exquisite in the rock here. Oh. That I can't get to. Okay, of course. Okay, but there are a whole bunch of superiors. Don't want superior, I want exquisite. I'm being very, very fussy here. What have we got? We've got some kind of basket here. Oh, okay. Herbalist shoulder piece. Okay, that's nice. Go on, I need... I, um, okay, I accidentally threw a pot down. Okay, it's not broken. <laughs> the bone, bone helm rhino down there as well. Yeah, I've got some fiery beads. Oh, nice. Also here. Oh. Okay. Nice. You know, you just jump down to... Copper pot, yeah. Okay. There is a bone helm rhino down there, eh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Nick is on her own adventure. She's playing choose your own adventure. <laughs> can uh, I shoot it? Sorry? Can I shoot it? You can if you want to, yes. Ah, there we go. Well done, Fury. Fury actually landed right next to an exquisite quality blue rock moss. Nice. Okay, apparently you have sufficient. You have managed to kill that bone helm rhino because yeah. I just see. Thank you for these gifts. <laughs> Got it. Now, if we just jump up here, we should be able to get to this exquisite one, and then we've got blue sky or blue rock moss as well. There we go. Two mosses done. Now it is just the crimson bark and the teeth that we need. In 10 minutes. Yeah. In 10 minutes. We can do that. Um, okay, I don't know why I just accidentally removed the echo stalkers because we are going for them. Mm hmm. Let's spin that again. And in terms of our bark, crimson bark. Um, Laura Gatherable, there we go. Crimson Bark. Crimson Bark. We're going to just pin that. Found in the floating, on the floating mountains above the Tangled Heart in the northwest of the Clouded Forest. Okay. So, up there. Four Ks. We can, we can fly that far. 
I just injured myself? Well, I didn't actually injure myself. Okay. Oh, it's more like five minutes. <laughs> oh, for you? For us. Oh, is it? for In terms of time? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> we can go a little bit over time if we wanted to, though. Run out the clock there with our... Uh, 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 bobs. Maybe we can actually... No, we can't really teleport much closer. We, we just fly quickly. 3.5 Ks. I didn't realize it's almost 10 o'clock for us. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Okay. I would love to see the Echo Stalkers again. But maybe, yeah, maybe we'll, we'll do this. And then we'll have all the ingredients we possibly need. And then next time we'll start by going to find some Echo Stalkers. No. Okay. I hear... Enjoy. First of all, I hear there's a storm glider right over there. Huh? And then I also see helicopters. Now, interesting, previously in one episode, I mean, I could fly with the storm gliders without the storm glider attacking me if I didn't have my weapons out and if I had the, uh, that special bond made with the self and Goliath. It turns, turns out that may have changed in the meantime because when I now recently tried to fly with a storm glider they would attack me on sight a storm glider just attacked me <laughs> oh is it <laughs> yeah. then i just gunned down like you said oh yeah if you you can you can survive by stooping down you are faster on the stoop than they are if they are not too close if they are close they manage to still you know uh, get to you but if you are far enough from it and you stoop straight down you actually manage to get out of its aggro range so it basically gives up the chase uh, the chase not the chase the chase there we go so we are going to be hunting echo stalkers agaliki but i think we're going to do that uh, next time so i've got it pinned there so i will hopefully remember next time that we are still going to go get the echo stalkers uh, because we are going to run out of time for our stream today so next time we are going to start get echo stalkers and then we are going to carry on with the story and cause a lot of chaos for the RDA and have a bit of sadness as well which uh, I'm not necessarily or not at all looking forward to but I think there is also a Taju sapling up here that we can get yes there is indeed one indeedy we're just going to grab this one if you haven't already got it though dear Because you may have it from our other game. I see you are coming in for landing. Right. I'm just going to go and get us the blood... Was it blood stem bark? No, crimson bark, not blood stem bark. Crimson bark. I'm just going to probably have it up here somewhere. Let's just check. Where is crimson bark? I think I heard something to this side. It's almost as if there is a slight ting 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 sound if you are looking in more or less the right direction. But I can't see any yet. There is something there. There's a superior quality. I don't want superior. I want exquisite. There is a superior one that we can't harvest right over here. Okay. There's another one over there. This one also looks like superior quality. Yeah, that's also superior quality. Come on. Just a little bit of crimson bark. Is that too much to ask? Exquisite crimson bark, please. Maybe up here. No, I found oh I find a found a pale coronas egg. Hmm. The pale version of those coronas eggs we harvested earlier. And that is it. I don't haven't found any exquisite crimson bark. Which kind of sucks. I try once more to this side. 
Maybe there's some up here. Let's see. There is an exquisite. Well, one. Okay, let's see. Come on. So, of course, the bark here seems to be a wound that has healed. And, I mean, you can see kind of like a resin that's also over there. So, uh, yeah, that has that's definitely a wound that has healed. And now we've just kind of taken the covering off again. You're not able. To, you haven't found any superior or a, uh, exquisite quality, eh? Um, no, not that I can see any. I just have, I think, superior quality. That's there. I think that's it. Yeah, I don't think we have two. That sucks. Maybe lower down. We'll see. But I almost think, yeah, I don't think there, there's any down here. Okay, so I will probably off screen go and come back and get another one for us there. Okay. And I think that is then where we are going to be calling it a day though. So thank you very much everyone for joining us. Hope you have a lovely Easter week, lovely Easter week and further. Have a lovely week up ahead. And we will be back next week, then we will be playing a bit of Pal World again. So on Friday, there will be the probably penultimate episode, the second last episode of this, uh, of uh, Avatar Frontiers of Pandora with me playing that. And then we'll be leaning over to a different game after that. And I think I have a few ideas of what to play there. So until next time then, everybody, stay safe and we'll see you all soon. Cheers. Bye.